Welcome back to the seasonal opener of the 2024 National Stole Series. We are back after our winter break to bring you some very exciting stole competitions all over the United States. If you are new to stole, the acronym stands for short takeoff and landing. And our competitors this week have a variety of aircraft set up to do just that. We're using one runway today and we'll be measuring the distance from the team's takeoff and landing. We take the takeoff and landing distance, combine them together to get a score for that run. If a pilot lands before the line or even touches the line, that run is disqualified and they will have to rely on another attempt. That's a new rule for this year and we will be paying very close attention to any part of the aircraft tire that touches that white line. Some folks are bound to be disappointed if they touch down too early. Many of our team's planes are highly modified and teams are constantly improving their airplanes to be more competitive. Each aircraft, depending on the model, will be assigned in a set category. We have four standard classes, starting with our biggest and heaviest aircraft, the Touring Class, followed by our middleweight, lighter aircraft, and backcountry. Then we introduce a lot of stole purpose built airplanes into the mix with our Adventure and Sport Class. National Stole Series welcomes new pilots to the competitions in their rookie class each new pilot having to attend additional safety briefings as they get into the series. The exhibition class is for those planes with multiple engines and finally the stars of Stole come out, the unlimited class. These pilots are competing for the big bucks. You'll see two different strategies in this class, super light aircraft or aircraft with high power to weight ratios. Throughout the season each pilot will be gathering points after each tour stop. For the 2024 season, we have a total of 10 stops, of course ending with our Legend Aircraft Lone Star Stole where we will crown the 2024 Class Champions. It all kicks off today. And welcome everyone to practice day here at Swamp Stole 2024, part of the kickoff of the National Stole, National Stole season. Let's get all the, the nooks and crannies figured out today instead of tomorrow. My name is Ryan Dombrowski. I'm joined with the leggy and vivacious Eric Farewell. <laughs> and we are ready, along with a whole other cast of characters today, to bring practice to you for tomorrow. We're practicing for tomorrow. Swamp Stole kicks off right now. Airplanes getting ready to go. It's going to be all sorts of fun action here. We're literally sitting at a lake, by the way, Eric. <laughs> it is a lake indeed. Pouring rains all night last night. And as you might imagine, uh, this, this doesn't quite drain like a Florida dirt, right? We've got real clay. We've got crawdads on the airport. And it has been a slosh fest. But it's been an epic because the runway's drying out now. These pilots are all primed and ready. They've been sitting in the airplanes for 15 minutes ready to go. We're excited. Swamp Stole 2024 is here, and we are going to see some incredible performances with some weather that is really exciting and with new camera angles that we've never seen before. Right now, we're looking at Pat McIntyre's head, and we're in the aircraft, in the cockpit, riding along with him. Lots of excitement for this year's Swamp Stole. That's right. You mentioned the weather, Eric. Right now, just because the Av Geek and me wanted to know, five knots from 198 degrees. The turf, it says dry. I, maybe on the runway, it is. It, there is a nice crown to it, but yeah, definitely giving Swamp Stole living up to its its namesake today. There's the back, like you said, Patrick McIntyre's head in that Rans S7, and today we're going to just give the pilots a chance to get used to the course, the race course. They're going to be able to put in some time, some practice for competition tomorrow, and we're going to bring all of you in the crowd and at home up to speed on what's been happening with National Stole. Well, there's been lots and lots of different things and changes. Every year we elect a pilot commission that are able to look at the rules, see if there's anything we want to change, see if there's anything we want to modify. And this year we have three big modifications to our rules, which are pretty exciting uh, and makes things safer, makes things more entertaining, all big parts of it. But the most important thing to talk about right now is the fact that the pilots have been released. Our air bosses are bringing them up to the line right now. Our favorite Lexi in the world out there 
making a pilot smile as she draws him up to the line. Pat McIntyre is our first pilot. He'll be released in just a moment. And we're excited to kick off Swamp Stole practice right here in Jennings, Louisiana. So you can see Pat, and we had that onboard image from him as well. That's one of the first big rule changes for the year, Eric. I'm wondering if you'd talk a little bit about the safety changes that have been added to the rule set. So for years, we've not required helmets because we realize this is not really high intensity. You know, we're not putting pilots in a great area of danger. They're just taking off and landing like they would any other day. But we realized that just because it's a race, we might as well make them look more like racers and enhance safety. So pilots are now required to wear a helmet and they're required to have shoulder restraints so that if there were ever any issue of any kind, there'd be no possibility of them leaning forward into that uh, dash or you could instrument panel. There's the words I'm looking for. Yeah, we found it. That's all right. It's practice day, Eric. We're, we're good. We're practicing very well indeed. So two big rule changes there. A definite shift toward more safety, which we love to see. But Pat's on the roll and off he goes around that 100 foot mark. Pat's flying a Rans S7 built in 2006, powered by a Rotax 914. That's a change for him. From last season, he said to me yesterday, he's like, I feel like I should give you another ride in it. It's got a bit more oomph. A bit more oomph indeed, and he's going to be very happy with these numbers for low wind. I mentioned the weather earlier. Tomorrow we're anticipating 12 to 15 knots on the nose, which is exactly what they want. Again, another 100-foot takeoff. A beautiful carbon cub. David Curley taking the line now at number 11. Beautiful Highlander. He's got a Rotax 912. Very aggressive, watches those shocks start to extend, getting airborne while the tires were still on the ground. Number 88, next up. Trying to find who these pilots are on practice day is always fun. By the time the full event happens, we know exactly who they are and what they're doing here. Tails off the ground, aggressive pull. It's a bit early, and you saw the main gear stick there. We talk a lot about the physics that go into this and the different types of control inputs you might see and different styles of flying from each of these pilots. They're picking the pull early oftentimes makes the aircraft actually not get off the ground. You need to find that exact balance moment. And here we have a Zenith, 701, very aggressive. Floats it off the ground, sub 100 feet. So 88, just to catch everyone up, that was piloted by Adam Gordon, a 2015 Cub Crafters Carbon Cub, powered by a Titan 340. Adam's actually one of our hosts at this event this year, stepping up big time and helping the planning process. Patrick floated over the line, gave up about 20 feet. Noticing that a lot of these pilots aren't getting too aggressive on the braking. They're trying to be nice to that grass so that tomorrow will still look nice. Much obliged. <laughs> right. We don't want to have – you can't always replace your divots. No, not, not when the divots come off of something like we have in our exhibition class this year, which is the T-Bone, massive 5,000-pound twin-engine aircraft. Low and slow, getting behind the power curve. It's going to be a scratch. So we have just a few seconds, uh, beautiful shot of someone coming in nice and low over that base to final turn there. It's David Curley. Dave Curley, one of the great competitors we saw last season as well. Uh, we've got a few seconds. I wonder, before he lands, can you explain the next rule change about the line? Yeah, absolutely. So in order to increase the clarity for pilots, we would change the rule that used to be you could land on or after the line. Now it is after the line only. If any part of your tire comes in contact with that line, we will be disqualifying you. And what's been really cool about this is we, you know, we had complaints from the pilots. They said, well, we, we can't see anyway. We don't know where the line is. So now the line is wider. It has been mowed down with a finishing mower. So we know exactly where that line is. And I think there's about five cans of paint on one line <laughs> <laughs> so that no one can complain. They should be able to see very well. Adam Great Gordon hanging it out. Getting aggressive on those brakes, taking up the whole runway. Got it across the line. Adam is an incredible host here at Swamp Stole. We had an incredible, just a 
fantastic dinner at his home airport about 30 miles north of here last night. Lots of pilots joining us, and he whipped up steaks for every single one of them. Here's Chris Jamison now in the Zenith 701. Looking pretty close to me. He calls his aircraft Sketchy Nelly. Sketchy? You know what? I, I, kind of, I can feel that. That, that. that sits right. Says he removed the slats, which you can notice on the leading edge of the wing there, and instead replaced it with VGs. It's a very interesting call. A lot of pilots this season adding slats to increase that angle of attack efficiency. We'll see uh, Keith Lang has done that on his beautiful Super Cub, the Lone Wolf. But the idea of removing slats is definitely a different, uh, a different plan. Very interesting to see what his performance numbers will look like. It looked like he was coming in fairly quick for a 701, but you never know. So Pat's back on the line for his next run at practice. His combined score, if this were competition tomorrow, would have been 245 feet combined. That's a 105-foot takeoff and a 140-foot landing. Uh, I think Pat's taking it easy. He's, he's, he's easing into it based on what we've seen from him previously. Indeed, and that was a much better takeoff. A like sub-100 feet looks like about 90 feet for him this time. He'll be much more satisfied with that result. And that onboard image now coming in live from the cockpit. Love to see these new advances in technology. We're always trying to bring you the latest and greatest and new things. Beautiful green, OD green and orange carbon cub. Floated off the ground again around 90 feet. Very similar scores to that S7 of Patrick McIntyre. Now Davey Curley from Spicewood, Texas, just down the street from my new hometown in Austin. Another beautiful green aircraft. Here's Adam Gordon on the line now, getting ready to go. That landing he just had a little sporty. Little sporty, so he's going to want to tighten it up a little bit on this next go around. I love the colors on this airplane, just absolute classy silver, black, and red. Pulling once again a bit early, floating it off around the 120 foot mark. So, Eric, when you and I talk about pulling it off a little early, the, it's really simple to know is if the pilot pulls back on that stick or that yoke and the airplane doesn't fly, it was too early. It's all a balance of timing, making sure you've got enough speed to generate the lift you need. It but is indeed. We'll see here, pulling it off the line around 130 feet. Bit of a reduction from last time. Pat McIntyre now. A couple other mods he's done to this S7. He's got a new flap handle, which he said he really loves. It's good over the line, according to Lexi, our line judge. He's just got to get it stopped on that wet turf. Right around 200 feet. Watching as these pilots each have different styles of bringing it in. This guy started his last approach much lower, this time stabilizing a bit higher. Get it nice and controlled. Bring the power in now as he lifts the nose to cross the line. It's good. He gave up a few feet there, getting across the line, that last little burst of power. I'm going to say that that's Jeff McMahon, based on what I see on my little info sheet here. Olive drab and orange. Yes, indeed. Super Cub replica, which is a 2011 Carbon Cub with EX2 wings. Interesting choices for sure. David Curley once again. Previous run, 265. Coming in kind of hot for Dave Curley there. Two arrivals now making their way around into a hold as we get these competitors back on the ground. These airports really unique with a bunch of intersecting runways to contend with, and our air bosses, as always, doing their best to encourage pilots to maintain, make the safest choice as possible. Adam Gordon now, flaps dropped. Looks very stable this time. 
keeping that left wing into the crosswind, which is a good thing to do. He's across the line, gives up about 30 feet, but a really smooth touchdown, putting a lot of energy into the, the shocks exactly like he wants to. Exceptional flying from Adam. I, I don't want to uh, armchair quarterback too much, but I'm guessing after the not feeling as controlled in the last practice run, he's wanting to tighten that up. That's why we saw a little more speed there. Little formation arrival coming in on our runway 3 1. A couple of potential competitors. This event actually has our highest number of registered competitors ever with 54 pilots coming to compete. And part of that is from another rule change because we decided to shift how we take registrations. T today, if you want to come and register and compete with us, you have to register at least 48 hours before the practice day. So before the race happens, you have to be 48 hours registered. And if you, for some reason, need to back out you have weather or something else never fret we can always apply that registration fee toward a later race in the year not a problem but it's been great for us because it allows us to amplify what we do right here in the booth and in the production to make sure that we have everything prepared because when you have these last minute registrations all of a sudden you're trying to create all these bumpers and pictures and things and it's just hard to do so now we have a cutoff time and we're seeing a lot of new competitors join us probably our largest number of rookies yet right yeah, here at this huge. event and I, I was going to add, I think that also adds to safety in a roundabout way. Because one thing that we saw, uh, there's, a, there's a private WhatsApp channel for all the pilots and competitors as they come in. And one thing we saw, because everyone knew, had made their go-no-go -no -go decisions early, right? That's factoring into their ability to make a safe arrival. What we saw in that WhatsApp channel yesterday, a lot of really challenging weather across the United States. And we saw this really great team effort of pilots saying, okay, I've made it this far due to the weather, IFR conditions, which is instrument flight rules, due to rain, snow up in the northern part of the country. There's Pat off the ground now. Uh, they were all really encouraging safety and helping each other problem solve. And we saw a couple tap out. Couple saying, "Hey, I can't, I can't make it. It's not safe for me to make it. I'll catch you guys on the next one." Exactly, and that's what we want to see. We never want to have get there itis creep into things. Jeffrey McMahon on the roll. Great color combination on this airplane. Not something you see very commonly. His previous best of 240 feet, followed by Pat McIntyre 245 and David Curley at 265. Keeping it tight in practice, even. Yes, indeed. Here, Mr. Curly now. Ready to go. Beautiful Behringer wheels on that airplane. Unloading the shocks early and off the ground around 125. Should be fairly happy with that result for an 80 horsepower airplane. That uh, engine, same family, Rotax family of engines compared to, say, what Pat's running. But uh, 912 versus 914, a little bit of engine nerd stuff happening there. And Adam, again, very aggressive, really trying for that rotation. Probably about two seconds before would be ideal. Just that little bit more acceleration would give him the energy he needs to sling that engine off the ground. And he's just getting that pull just a moment too soon. Talking to competitors over the year, and Eric, I wonder what you do when you fly. I've heard that people sing songs in their heads and just count to a number. Uh, when I was flying the J3 has been in my training, it was, I think, like three. <laughs> so they count to three. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, I should be able to fly now. Um, what are you, when you're flying stole profiles, what do you do in the cockpit? You know, it really depends on the conditions because for a lot of people, yes, they may be able to get a, a vibe check from a, a song or from counting. For me personally, I really like to feel what the airplane is doing. And it depends so much on conditions because if you have that right gust, you really need to feel what the ailerons are telling you, what the elevator is telling you, and get a vibe check from that. So I don't have a prescription for that that is really copyable. You just feel it in your, in your bones. You know what's happening with your airplane. You get that rotation moment just right and go from there. I want to call out just a little condition vibe check. Pat McIntyre, if I'm not mistaken, had his wheels locked for about 100 feet. Just sliding on the wet turf. 
he did indeed. Right there we saw Brandon, sorry, Jeffrey, uh, making it across the line, touch of power, really leaning into using the shocks to take as much of that as he could. Nice control from him. And now looking across the field, we may not be able to see it in the cameras for those who aren't live, but we see a couple of our unlimited guys making their way across. Justin Meadows having his debut with us in that beautiful Just Aircraft. And, of course, the legend Dan Reynolds in his Valdez special Chinook. Great to have both these pilots here ready for practice, running their race fuel, nitrous, all primed and ready. The Olympic category is a sight indeed. And often a sound, a <laughs> sight is. and a sound indeed. It's just a, it's a lot of mayhem uh, coming out of those machines, out of the, out of the propellers, off the engines. It's just a lot of noise. It is indeed. And we, sadly, we, we got to see Justin's airplane at Lone Star last year, but he had a mechanical failure, was not able to actually join us for the competition. So very excited to see how his performance stacks up against the best of the best in the unlimited category. Justin, obviously a, a legend from Reno, flying here with us today for the first time in the stole category. Just sliding all the way down there for Adam Gordon. Conditions are hard. It's hard to get stopped. It is indeed. These guys are basically hydroplaning in certain parts of the runway. And we see, again, a very flat approach from the Zenith. Not having the slats certainly changes the way the airplane flies. I'll be intrigued to see a side-by-side -side comparison as we see Sheldon Hetherington making his way to the runway here shortly. So that was Chris Jameson again in the Zenith coming down. You know, that what you're seeing in this first practice run is also the time-old, age-old debate about tri-gear versus uh, tail dragger. We don't have to debate. We know which one's better. That's true. <laughs> but for those of you at home, what we're describing, if you look at the aircraft taxing up to the line right now, this beautiful silver and orange uh, cub type, that... Uh, <laughs> We've got a competitor who's got a bone to pick with us about that uh, about that statement you just made there, Eric. Um, so that aircraft there is what we call a tail dragger. You can see why the tail is dragging on the ground. Uh, certain advantages and disadvantages to a tail dragger. Uh, a tri-gear or a nose dragger, if you want to be a little more derogatory, like Sheldon's plane, Redbird, the yellow one, confusingly named Redbird, <laughs> uh, taxiing out there to get ready to practice. Uh, the nose in the front, maybe what you think of, like an airliner or a classic GA aircraft, benefits and disadvantages there. Um, the big advantage that I think a lot of pilots would tell you is that if you are running the tail dragger setup, you're just able to get in and out of rough strips particularly like the kind of bush flying that we're simulating here today, you're able to get in and out of those strips a little more aggressively based on the, the landing gear. Love to see the rifle case on the wing of that Cub Crafters. Admirable performance wins lining up down the runway for him, exactly what he's looking for. That's James Barkheimer with a Titan 340. We're in a 35 inch bush wheels. He's accumulated nearly a thousand hours and loves his tailwheel aircraft. <laughs> Bit of an early pull there again. The aircraft sticking to the ground just a little longer than we'd like to see. That was Christian Fisher in 181. That red and white Cub Crafter is a rookie. First time out. So the first practice of National Stole, first practice run for Christian there. Great to see 32-inch bush wheels on that beast. Love to see these new National Stole pilots joining us today, getting their feet wet into the comp competitive side of flying. Beautiful Husky now on the roll. And now a Super Cub, blue and white. Looking for the race number in the back window there. We're... we're Working as hard as we can, we may have to ask for some binoculars to help us out, but here he is on the roll. That's David Warren, was a Navy pilot, transitioned to the Marines. I'm reading somebody else's. <laughs> Just kidding. That's David Warren, though. <laughs> you, were, you were reading Levi Nogas. Yeah, well, that's the joys of, of sp spreadsheets. Spreadsheets. things together. <laughs> Hashtag uh, Google Sheets, not a sponsor. Okay, here's Shelton Hetherington now in Redbird. 
He's been practicing very hard through the offseason. I wanted to point out, did you see that he started to pull and realized we're not ready yet? Put that nose back down for another second, pulled back, do you think? Yes and no. What's really interesting about the Zenith aircraft is those airplanes are actually have a flying fuselage. So they utilize a higher angle of attack on takeoff to get that fuselage to provide lift, which is very rare. It's something very different compared to most of the aircraft out here. But you'll see that a lot from our Zenith pilots. Winds now 14 knots from 156 degrees here in Jennings. Turf is wet. Humidity is 64%. Yeah, it's mostly because we're standing in it. We're standing in the water. So, Eric, I wanted to ask you one more thing in terms of rule changes this year. As we've got a, another aircraft on short final. Let's talk about how we earn annual points. So annual points works just like you'd find it in almost any other racing series, whether it's Formula One, MotoGP, et cetera. The goal is that we award the most points, of course, to the first place, second place, third place, all the way down. And those points then count toward our annual championship. And that championship takes place this year in November in Texas for the Legend Aircraft event of the season. Absolutely incredible event this past year. Can't wait to have it again. And we tally all those race points this year 80% of events will be counted toward your total score, and then we will crown the annual points leader after the championship. So it will be an invitational and absolutely awesome event, and it allows these pilots to keep track beyond more than just one event. They really get to experience what's happening all year long. It makes a difference. Christian now with the – looked like he was going to be a little short, gave it a goose of throttle – that goose of throttle might save you in terms of getting over the line, but with that throttle also comes a little bit of thrust. Throttle thrust, of course. So that thrust is going to give you more speed, which is going to be more float, which is going to make you go further down the line, give your brakes a little bit more work to do. Ooh, that's a close one just before the line or on the line, but great control right there. Love to see someone working the throttle, really milking it, just keeping that high alpha control all the way down the runway. John Luton in that Husky. First landing, first practice for that beautiful sweeper cub. That's David Warren, 1967 PA-18. Love seeing a, like a, a vintage super cub at a stole event. We're about to see another one flown by Keith Lang from Wasilla, Alaska in the next heat, along with one of the most beautiful carbon cubs I've ever seen, actually two of them. I, I have a, a secret love affair with Nick's SS and then the one behind him, the blue one, has a paint job like nothing I've ever seen before. Just absolutely stunning paint. And I'm looking forward to seeing that heat. But Sheldon, look at this approach angle. Very, very different from what we saw from the previous Zenith. He's got that nose much higher. He's carrying the energy forward and down progressively, working his way to the line, almost blind, but he is across it, gets on the ground and onto the brakes. He's running very small tires compared to many other competitors, but he is very efficient there. Great landing for Sheldon. Those slats coming into play. Talk to me about what a slats do, Eric. Oh, my goodness. We, we could go on <laughs> and on. We go a lesson on aerodynamics? The basic element that we'll talk about is the enhancement of their ability to hold a higher angle of attack or higher angle of incidence. And the why is behind it, I'll let someone who knows physics more or aerodynamics more explain. But basically what you can look for is a much higher angle of incidence from pilots that are operating with them. They allow the wing to hold from stalling to a much slower, comparable speed when you have the ratio of speed versus angle, right? So that, that is the primary function of them. How that works, I'll let someone smarter than me explain. Uh, hashtag, they're cool. <laughs> and they help a lot, and you're going to see airplanes that can fly super slow with those slats. You'll even see slats that can deploy, although we've seen, I think we've seen that less and less in competition. There, some aircraft have slats that, based on the apparent wind, will 
extend when uh, like they're spring loaded and they'll extend when things get slower that's also inherently complicated and they can actually deploy uh, asymmetrically so i feel like we've seen a reduction in that on we the circuit indeed. but the biggest reason for that is if you have slots that can deploy they can also come back into the wing and allow the wing to get up on step and get higher higher amounts of speed so for certain competitions like stole drag those are very advantageous because you're going from that slow flight configuration into a very fast flight configuration back to slow flight and that's where we see deployables more commonly but again as you mentioned an asymmetric deployment is really problematic uncomfortable at best uncomfortable <laughs> at best indeed there's Christian now. Got the timing a little bit better that time. He did indeed. Not as much of a stick, but coming off the ground around 125 feet. Yeah. On the roll with that lovely cream, creamy white and red Husky. That's John Luton from Belgrade, Montana. First run in practice, 685 feet combined. Putting him just ahead of David Warren at 700. Sheldon at 660 and Christian Fisher with a really presentable 443. Trying to improve on that 700 foot score. David Warren on the roll in the PA 18. And rounding out this heat, Sheldon Hetherington in the Redbird, the very yellow Redbird. <laughs> Sheldon on social. You check him out on social. Follow him on Facebook. Phenomenal photographer. But yeah, separately, uh, phenomenal photographer. Just lots of videos of him just really putting in work, getting ready for Swamp Stole literally every day. Hey, put in an hour, another hour of practice for Swamp Stole, another hour of short takeoffs and landings. Oh, I did. I think the one that I, I think I – I don't think I'm exaggerating. I think one day he's like, oh, I did 60 landings today. Just like beating up the pattern, really trying to put that work in. And I'm excited to see what he does today and tomorrow. He has been indeed. And he's been really fun to watch his sampling of how the aircraft performs in different weather conditions. He lives in Pensacola, Florida, so he gets that strong sea breeze much of the time. And he was throwing down some impressive numbers. James Barkheimer now, previous best run, 391 for practice. Getting off the runway, we've got Christian coming up, short, short final, just hovering it off the ground, finding his rhythm. He's going to be good over the line. Great landing from Christian. That's exactly what you want to do. I, that was textbook. For, for a rookie, that's just incredible. The other thing that I noticed he did better this time around was the aerodynamic braking. Uh, that's, so basically, <laughs> let's go to Airplanes 101 for a second. What you'll see a lot of pilots do is they'll pull the stick full back, and the control surface on the back end of the aircraft is called the elevator because it, it makes, makes you, you go, go up, up and down. And, down. <laughs> and, and so <laughs> the benefit of keeping that stick full back is twofold, right? One, on all aircraft, the longer you do that, the more drag you have to help you slow down. On a tail dragger, having that stick full back keeps... Sorry, just watching that landing there. No, no, it was impressive indeed watching him get the power in exactly at the right moment to make it across the line and to cushion his descent. I mean, obviously, he was coming down pretty quickly there right at the edge. These pilots putting in the work. Keeping that stick back keeps your tail on the ground is going to help you maintain directional control. That's the other side of it for tail draggers. Absolutely, and it's something that's hyper important as... One of the drawbacks, let's, let's put it this way, one of the very small drawbacks <laughs> of the tailwheel <laughs> could be construed as something that, called a ground loop where you lose that control of the direction of the aircraft. And so keeping the tail planted helps with that greatly. As we see Levi Nogas making his way across the airport. Great to see you, Levi. Yeah, everyone, round of applause for Levi <laughs> walking across the line. There we go. Levi is one of our incredible competitors. Great experience. A lot of fun to watch. And today he's flying something we don't normally get to see. Normally he's in his Storch. This weekend he'll be competing in a Super Cub. And Sheldon making it just about to the line, but not quite over it. That's a scratch for Sheldon. So 
So I'll li it must have been close because it looked like Lexi was about to wave the checkered flag, and then she dropped it. So it had to be really close for him there. Here's James Barkheimer now coming up for his next run. 2009 Cub Crafters EX2, 35-inch bush wheels. I don't know if they're big enough. I mean, they're pretty mighty. I will say my first time flying bush wheels was on 35s, and I was just flabbergasted by how differently the airplane performed compared to, say, your average J3. You know, dropping it in on the side of a mountain that it doesn't even flinch. It just loves it. So let's talk advantages and disadvantages there. One, you've got an extra shock absorbing capability in the in the tires. Uh, disadvantage, you've got a lot of tire hanging out in the wind for cruise speed. You do indeed, and you see a pretty significant reduction in speed going for even from a, like a 26 to a 35, you'll see a 10 to 12 knot difference. And if you're looking for cross country speed, that is probably not the choice you want to make. But for most of these guys, they don't really mind the cross country speed loss because they can land just about anywhere. There's also a conversation in competition about the fatter the tire you have, the more angle of attack you have at the beginning here. And when we talk about angle of attack, it's the angle at which the apparent wind, the wind is hitting the wing. And that angle, that bite of angle is what generates lift. And if you've got a bigger ability to get that tail lower and get more angle of attack, in theory, you're off the ground sooner in a competition like this. And that is always the goal. How did I do in that aerodynamics lesson? Was that all right? That, that felt, was pretty felt pretty good. That was pretty solid. Was it pretty okay? The internet comment just like, well, actually, you forgot about this coefficient of lift, whatever. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. My ankle of attack, push wheel tech TED Talk. We'll actually be talking more about that as we start to see some of the heavies like Brandon Korn, who've done so much work over the past uh, off season, changing the way their aircraft is set up. Brandon went to much larger tires and his ability to get that angle of attack from his tricycle gear airplane has significantly increased. We'll be very excited to see what kind of numbers he's able to throw down. Sheldon, once again, on the roll, that quiet Rotax. Getting that rotation at about the same spot every time, I think a little later this time. Sheldon, now, a little, I think I've got this little nerd thing about Sheldon figured out. You may have seen a trailer recently for a movie about the, the Blue Angels. Yes. And it looks epic. It's in IMAX. And there's a shot in the trailer of a F-18, a Blue Angel F-18, going over what I'm assuming is one of the piers in Pensacola or near, near there. Barkheimer now plopping it in. Great control from Barkheimer. And you, you can see the F-18 come over the, the pier and everyone's clothes blows up. And there's a flag, <laughs> a targeting flag. If I'm not mistaken, in one of those shots, you might be able to see Sheldon because I remember seeing him post stills Incredible from stills. being on the pier that day yes. or, or a similar day. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to see that film, obviously, as a, any, any av geek should be. Watching the Blues do their thing, particularly in those training sessions, is just staggering. The, the amount of control that they have. You know, it's, it's a little bit faster than what we do here, but very similar amounts of control. It's interesting. Uh, I got to meet some of the team, the Blue Angels team, last year at Yellowstone and then later at Oceana. And... They at Yellowstone, the Yellowstone International Air Show. A little bit of bounce happening there. Now we've got to get that stick back. Great job controlling that bounce, though. I think the, the fact that he brought the stick back to neutral allowed it to not porpoise or to have any PIO issue there. That shows a pilot that knows what he's doing, that's got plenty of experience, because those are the little sticky moments that if you don't know your airplane, you're going to wish you did. PIO stands for Pilot Induced Oscillations. See, I just need a, a translator to walk around That's with. That's what I'm here this. for. <laughs> uh, I was going to mention about the Blues at Yellowstone International, though. Right before the show, they had all been with local bush pilots flying in the backcountry. These are like high-performing jet pilots, and they were loving the backcountry flying that they got to do. So uh, everyone digs it, even the Blue Angels uh, endorsed. 
when Blue Angels endorse it, you know you're doing a good thing. And I have to say, those guys got to go for a great ride, and I wish we could all just get a ride from them. Hashtag call me Blue Angels. <laughs> Sheldon now getting that nose up. Getting stabilized on that approach. You can see him fighting the bit of a crosswind here, getting the power back into it. It would be across the line. This will be a good landing for him. A little bit of directional, lateral directional control sliding there on the turf, on that wet turf, but he got that under control as well. And I wonder what you think about, so Justin Tisdale, number 18, sitting out in front of us there. We, he's uh, most improved from last season, if I'm not mistaken. He's just an incredible person. As we're watching him taxi through the water, throwing up a mist, this airplane is a just a bruiser of a plane. He's had so many crazy experiences from cockpit fires to engine outs. He has done a lot of incredible things in his life and overcome so much. We love watching what Justin's done, coming home from his tours of duty, building an airplane, getting a pilot's license, and then joining us here on the National Stoll Tour. So curious what Justin's thinking watching Sheldon, similar type aircraft, very different engines on the front of those two air airplanes, which we'll talk about a little bit later when Justin's flying. But I got to wonder, is there a little bit of sub-competition with the, with the legend aircraft, the Moax, the mother of all cubs? You're going to see them flying a little bit later. Uh, there's a lot of competition within the type Within the community of owners, absolutely. I believe it was uh, just outside Nashville where we were last year. And uh, one, learned a little bit about Carbon Cubs and why they are amazing. Uh, but two, learned a lot about Nick. And the thing that was really interesting to me is even though we were in a Carbon Cub, even though we were getting ready to just go check out the sunset like uh, two pilots do sometimes, uh, <laughs> he ran his checklist with what I can only say is like consummate airline pilot professionalism. And I made the mistake of even just asking a quick question while we were getting ready. He's like, nope, wait, sterile cockpit, let's go. <laughs> like, Love to see that, like, And the, the safety and the precision and the adherence to that, uh, he flies that plane just like he flies at work. I, I think he said this is a little more fun. Well, I think it's, it's worth mentioning that, you know, you as a pilot, you know, each of us, we end up in these positions where we have our own style, we have our own experience, and coming to a place like this where you can learn from someone like Nick that you, he never turns it off. He's always going to have that sterile cockpit. He's going to make sure he's doing things by the book, and it can be a great reminder for us to increase our safety bubble, and I think that's what's wonderful about this community. It gives us that enhanced opportunity. That said, Keith Lang, at the opposite end of the spectrum, perhaps, is an Alaska Bush pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have wings on it? Yep. Do we need to do a pre-flight? Maybe. <laughs> you know? This guy, though, is an incredible stick and a good friend to the series and myself. This airplane has seen a radical transformation from what we saw last year. Makes the pull a bit early, coming off about 175. Be very interested to see... Oh, 150. Very interested to see how his performance has shifted with the addition of slats and so many other new modifications to the airplane. I told him I heard he'd got nitrous, and he d said no. So we'll, we'll have to find out. Started uh, piloting in his father's lap at the age of five. Since then, his own 27 different aircraft and flown over 60 aircraft types. I, I can only hope someday. Beautiful carbon cup here with one of the best paint jobs I've ever seen from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Excellent performance for his first takeoff with us here at National Stoll. That airplane was painted in 2012, which I couldn't believe. A little bit of stuttering here from this Husky. And now for something completely different. Justin Tisdale with his <laughs> Viking-powered Zenith 750. Pilot that joined us, you know, very few hours, came right into the series, wanted to be a competitor, wanted to do it in honor of his father. And he has improved so significantly. That was an excellent takeoff from Justin. Folks, looping around in the pattern now, 
Uh, Eric, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about this season's schedule. Next month, we've got Heritage Stoll. Yeah, Heritage Stoll is actually one I'm extremely excited for because it's at a location that I never thought would have been possible. In Virginia Beach, Virginia, there is an incredible museum, a museum of military aviation, and their facilities are unlike almost anywhere else. It reminds me of Fantasy of Flight, just absolutely beautiful facilities, great airplanes, wonderful volunteers, fabulous people. I was there for a business event a few years ago and was blown away by it. So when they reached out to us and said, hey, we want you to come here and do an event, we was over the moon. And so next month, we'll be having our first Heritage Stoll event at the end of April. Make sure you check out our website, nationalstoll.com, for information about how you can come and be a part of that event, whether it's as a viewer, a volunteer, or as one of our visiting pilots. You like those three Vs? Yeah, that was good. (laughs) Viewer, viewer, wait, what? Volunteer (laughs) or visiting pilots. Uh, So registration's open for that now. It is indeed. Come on, help us out, compete. If you haven't, if you're a pilot watching this, get in here. Look at Keith Keith Lang. Lang. Holy cow. Just on the line. He's not going to like the scratch, but incredibly slow. Getting it stopped, sub 125. You know, this is a whole new airplane for Keith once he changed the wing that significantly. I know just in the past year, I mean, Keith joined us for his first event at Wayne last year in May. Since then, he changed the leading edge to a cuff. Then he took the cuff off and put these slats on. He is completely changing how that aircraft flies and having to relearn it now for the third time this year because not only that, he also changed airplanes mid-season, flying that cub down all the way from Alaska. I believe it was a 57-hour flight, something along those lines. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But uh, great to have Keith here learning the airplane once again and putting his backcountry experience to the test. Got a Husky on approach here. Nine Mike Alpha. Beautiful touchdown. This airplane so reminiscent of Austin Clemens aircraft. I keep waiting for him to throw in the reverse thrust. Just got a message from Brandon Corn saying we've got heavies ready to go. We get to see some of our touring class chewing up the air. Brandon with his completely reworked Cessna 205. I actually flew in that airplane to get here from Texas this, uh, just two days ago. And it is a smooth flying airplane. I flew us all the way here, had a great time doing it. I've flown 205s before, but his just flies different. Clearly a lot of attention to detail, to making sure it's all rigged exactly the way he wants it rigged. And speaking of exactly the way he wants it, Justin Tisdale has been putting in the work Look at this high alpha approach, completely different than we saw last year even. Dropping it in, getting a one wheel, heavy on those brakes. Those wheel tires are locked up. Nick Ardillo now taxiing back to the line. So let's talk a little bit about Justin's aircraft. Uh, Zenith, like we've seen before, Sheldon, uh, who by the way is right here. Hello, Sheldon. Nice Great flying, flying. that was nice flying. Nice boots. Did you fly in the boots? He did fly in the (laughs) boots, yeah. He's making, just splashing around. It's just a little hard to fly in the boots. Uh, So Justin's aircraft, different power plant out front. And you're a bit of a power plant nerd, I think. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. So could you walk us through a little bit about what's different about what Justin's running up front? So you'll hear it as it taxis by the engine that's on that is not designed as an aircraft engine. It's actually designed for a Honda Fit. It comes out of the car, gets a gearbox mated to it, some fancy electronic solutions, and the next thing you know, you have a Honda-powered airplane. Viking Aircraft does this out of Florida. I've actually done this for one of my aircraft. I ended up switching to a more traditional aircraft engine, but Justin really does not have a lot of options for the power that he wants from this airplane. He really could only go to like Rotax 915 or 916, pick up an older, heavier Lycoming. So he decided to try out this Viking engine. And he's had some very interesting experiences with it throughout the years he's been flying it. But definitely listen for it because that gearbox has a very distinctive whine. Nick Ardillo ripping her off the ground in a strong crosswind. Keith Lang now in that Super Cub. 
one to watch tomorrow, I think, probably fair to say. One to watch. Off short-ish. Short-ish for feet. Keith. We just got a first look at our trophies. Look at that. I'll wait till these guys get off the ground. We'll switch to the booth yeah, view we'll so you can see these. But they're heavy, and they're actually recovered slate from New Orleans. So I'm excited to show these off. Super cool trophies for Swamp Stole. On the roll, aggressive, pulling a little less than he could have there. I think he could have seen a little bit better result. Again, one of the prettiest airplanes I've seen yet. All right, now here comes Jeff Harrell, 2013 Aviat Husky, 180 horsepower. Jeff's a rookie with us this year, but he's no rookie to flying. Jeff actually is a crop duster pilot full time. I believe he said he flew 601s up in northeast Louisiana, and he's here flying his boss's airplane, and his boss is flying it too. So super cool. We'll see some great flying from these guys. Tisdale now on the roll. Much more aggressive, pulling off the ground, sub 150. So let's talk about these trophies. We have a few seconds. We can go to the broadcast camera, mostly because I wanted to see. I want to see myself on camera again. It's beautiful, beautiful. There we go. Guys. There, there I am. There I am. Oh, look at the trophy too. Look awesome. at that. That. So you said it was recovered slate from New Orleans. It is indeed, and obviously we have to keep with that New Orleans theme here. But before we do, or before we go any further talking about how cool this is, let's watch Nick Ardillo. There, go away from me. I don't want to see me anywhere. There, Nick Ardillo on the line. There we go. He's good. Sliding on that turf. Tail bouncing up just a little bit at the end there. That's fine. We have some really cool stuff here. Yeah, you know, this is this cool. This has become tradition. We always right? have the beads here from Mardi Gras land. And I have to say a huge thanks to Matt Peterson, the, the colonel, colonel, for putting these things Jinx, together. Yummy, Coke. <laughs> so we, I have one of these as well from our first ever Swamp Still. He gifted one to me for announcing, which is really great. And so great to have. you got to wear it loud, proud, big. I don't know if we made it on the screen there, but it's a 3D printed uh, I, for some logo. Reason, I wanted to call it an amulet, but it's not Pendant. an amulet. <laughs> Here's Keith Lang now. Look at those flaps all the way down. The flaps are those inboard controls that add a little drag and add some lift as well. Tail down, Great good control. over the line. Great control across the line. Different approach than we saw last time where he was really coming in using more of that high alpha power settings. Here he allowed the aircraft to kind of drift in and put as much energy into those Acme shocks as possible. Keith is a believer in the Acmes. He says that he will not compete without them. He doesn't even like to fly the airplane without them. The first thing he does when he buys another Super Cub, order a set of Acmes. A little bit of a helicopter impression happening here now, this beautiful aircraft that we are searching our spreadsheets for, trying to figure out who it is, but whoever you are, uh, you have money well spent on that paint job. Good over the line. Let me look at race number two. Oh, I need new glasses. 229. Two, 229 or 219, one of the two. Looking at these numbers now, seeing these pilots really start to dial it in. Jeffrey bringing it in this Husky. Chop and power, a little late, gave up about 75 feet there before touchdown. Sure is easy to armchair quarterback. It this really though. is. <laughs> you should see me fly. It's not pretty <laughs> at all. Big slip here from Justin Tisdale, the moustache flyer. He's got some new stickers on the airplane from some people who've supported him over the years. We'll try to get a look at them as they go by, but I asked him about one of them, and He's a combat wounded veteran. As he came back fr from his deployment, he said that they gave him a chair that allowed him to get back to mobility, and he wanted to support their cause. So huge shout out to them. I, I don't know the name offhand, but as he taxis by, I'll try to get a good shot of that and share their mission because Justin's always doing all he can to give back to veterans and really to enhance their lives. It's a great mission indeed, one that we firmly support here at National Stoll as well. 219 is the race number in question. Sorry, that's was a kind of a weird segue right after uh, what you're saying about all the work that Justin's doing. But I'm on a mission 
to figure this out. So part of the challenge for you at home, just to, to give a little cover to Eric and I right now, is normally tomorrow during competition, the planes will be sorted into classes, right? You heard that at the top of the broadcast, at the top of the show, Reese Dockhan was explaining that in his voiceover about how everyone's in competitive classes. Well, during practice, it's a big mashup of who wants to practice when, um, you've got types that are we're, they're pretty similar. They're running pretty similarly right now. Uh, but we have a very specific order during competition. It makes it easier for us in the booth to figure out who's who. <laughs> so that's a little bit of what's going on right now. Nick I Ardillo there just a big pull-up. He had a ton of energy in that airplane. Very impressive. Keith Lang tanking the line. And I, and I will say, you're absolutely right. It is a definite challenge here in the booth when you're trying to figure out who's who, especially when you have so many rookies joining us for the first time ever, which is just amazing. But that is Edward Boyd from the Skull Bandits. I found it in the spreadsheet. <laughs> That's <laughs> Edward Boyd running those Acme Aero Shocks. Big 82 Kato prop. Uh, 3,000 hours of total flight time for that gentleman coming you know, up to the cool line right now. about that paint job is the Mustang on the side. It almost looks like a shark because there's a shark mouth on it, but there's a Mustang painted into the side of that carbon cup. Really fascinating to see all the different types of finishes that are available today. Nice control. Again, lots of energy in the airplane. Probably could have pulled a full second earlier but just making it look easy. Now the Husky. Jeff Harrell. Best performance so far for Jeff Harrell practice, 665 feet. And I want to put this in perspective. Again, this is across types. The best we've seen so far at practice is Jeff McMahon in the Super Cub. 240 feet, which is just a bonkers number. Patrick McIntyre right behind him by five feet, 245 feet. And Keith Lang really throwing down some numbers at 264. Now that's an adventure class airplane with a 264. That airplane would be competing against the legend Moax and others like them. Justin Tisdale on the roll. Watch him dive the airplane toward the ground, then pull it off early. It's a new technique he's been perfecting, definitely changing his performance numbers. He's initially pulling the nose back. Then once he builds some airspeed, pushing the nose forward, allowing that weight to sink in toward the ground, and then snatching back as quickly as he can, catapulting the weight off the ground. I've never seen anyone do it quite like that, and this is all new for him. He was out here practicing on Wednesday. And I commented to him, I'm like, I've never seen you fly this well. Nick Ardillo just over the line. Heavy under braking. Very wet out there. It's just so wet. I got a lake. We got a lake right in front of us. Hey, so folks, after Heritage Stole, you might want to hop over to Oklahoma Stole. That's in May. Registration is also open for that. Another new event on the, Another on new the circuit. Event. Indeed. But it actually is really one I'm excited for because this one is being brought to us by Patriot Aircraft, who makes some incredible planes. My buddy Dozen is flying their Super Patriot right now. It's just an amazing performer and beautiful finish. And they decided at the Gainesville, or not the Gainesville, the Lone Star event, they said, we have to do this. We have an air park that we're building. And so he's partnered up with a friend who's building an air park right at the border of Arkansas and Oklahoma it's for Oklahoma's first ever stole competition. It's going to be one you can't miss. Great pilots already registered coming in from all over the country. And it's right there. It's centrally, centrally located right in the middle of the country. We hope to see many of you there. Keith Lang again, hi. Dropping it in right at the last second. Brakes are just locked up. Absolutely just locked. Slide. It didn't, he didn't even let up on the brakes. It was sliding until 150 feet. So imagine if it were dry, how yeah. short those scores would be. Absolutely. And those numbers we'll see tomorrow with stronger winds forecasted. And, of course, hopefully the sun will do its job and dry out this runway for us. Edward Boyd on approach in what may very well be the prettiest carbon cub of all in all the land. You can stop gushing about it. I think we, I we, all, we all know. I can't help it, man. I love a <laughs> good paint job. It is stunningly beautiful. Look at that tail solo. A little a bit scratch. of burst of power. Yeah, and a scratch there. But 
Now, here's the thing. Practice, we can do that. We need to dial it in, right? We need to dial in for every specific race course, and that's exactly what practice is for. Jeff popping the power right there at the last second, making it across the line. Still the best score of 665. We'll see if this one comes in better. Ed at 616 is his best in that blue carbon cup. So we've got a little bit of time because Justin's coming in doing his best helicopter impression, just hovering it in very high right now and kind of holding it off in the wind. Uh, getting that nose down a little bit. There we go. Just hovering it in. He's going to give me some time to talk about this. I want to talk about Lift Aviation. And we've got a lot of sponsors to mention. Get a little burst of power, actually. Hold He's it off now. He's holding it off. Huge deck angle there. Oh, oh touched oh. early. Oh, okay. Scratch by Lexi there. Whew, that one was a little exciting. It was a lot of sync there on final. But to talk about Lyft Aviation, Lyft is one of our sponsors, and they're also a sponsor of Justin's. They make some incredible uh, products, including flight shoes, flight helmets, knee boards, all sorts of things. Their helmets are some of the prettiest I've ever seen. Highly recommend their products, and that is what Justin is wearing in the cockpit right now. I don't, want, I don't know if he's wearing muck boots like the rest of us or not. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> Lyft offering prizes to competitors throughout this season. So watch for that. Including, I believe, prize, uh, helmet packages for some of our pilots that win the national title. So a really exciting prize. Not at a, not at a very inexpensive prize. Quite an expensive prize indeed. want to talk about some other sponsors when we cycle into the next round of practice. First, we got to talk about Lad Gardner Insurance. They've been a partner of National Stole since the beginning. They're a uh, pilots who use that product, Justin, you just saw, and also Justin Metters, who's going to fly and practice a little bit later, it looks like. Um, so thank you to Lad Gardner Insurance for their assistance. Legend Aircraft, we're going to see some Moax. I think we've got one taxing out right now. Uh, big sponsor of us at the end of the year as well, bringing the finals to you uh, in Texas. Le Legend Aircraft, the Legend Cub, continues to be one of the most coveted American manufactured sport aircraft. They've got all sorts of designs that are designed in the spirit of the legendary J3, the PA-11, the PA-18. So that's Legend Aircraft. Thank you to them. Also want to give a big thank you to USATrailersDirect.com. We are sitting right now in a USA Trailers Direct product. They brought this to us. They've got locations in Colorado, Oklahoma, and Georgia. Check them out. Flighthelmet.com. We're talking about Lyft as a helmet provider. Also, Flighthelmet.com, huge sponsor. Really appreciate their help this year. Use code uh, NSTOLE50. NSTOLE50 to save 50 bucks on, you guessed it, a flight helmet from Flighthelmet.com. And I'm going to sneak one more in there. Look at that. Beautiful Elbert taken off there. Uh, Sarasota Avionics, long-term partner of NationalStole.com. <laughs> National Stole, they're the authorized Garmin dealer. Uh, we've been working with them for a long time. We'll talk about more folks that bring all of this action to you, but I am joined by a very special guest in the booth now. Eric disappeared on me and magically <laughs> replaced with an epic beard, sir. Say hello. Who are, who are you and what, what do you do? Uh, so my name is Russ Keith, and I'm the president of the board for Airplanes and Coffee. Airplanes and Coffee, you may have seen yes, on the internet. But what does Airplanes and Coffee do beyond, I mean, obviously there's a, a Facebook group that you guys manage, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Right, right. So Airplanes and Coffee is 501c3, and our whole goal is put the next generation of pilots in the cockpit, the next generation of A&P mechanics in the hangar. Got some great takeoffs now happening right there. You saw the Legend Aircraft, mother of all cubs. And now, if I'm not mistaken, we've got a Badlands Traveler on yeah, the line. That's what it looks like. Very rare and unique bush plane. Let's see what he can do here. Oh, very nice takeoff. So that Jared Gerritsen is who's flying that, the 2021 Badlands Traveler. 
previously that design was basically, they called it a Cessna Cub, right? You had right. a Cessna wing with a Piper Super Cub inspired body. Now that aircraft, the first one flying, the only one flying with it, a totally bespoke wing. So it's no longer the Cessna wing, the 150 or the 172 wing. Now it's a totally Badlands designed airfoil, which is really exciting to see. And he's very proud of it. And of course, a great friend of uh, the National Stole Series, the founder, Doug Jackson, owns a Badlands Traveler who had the Cessna 172 wings on it. And he is now getting a set of those wings put on his airplane right now. I think everyone's getting a set of those wings put on their, <laughs> on their Badland Traveler they've, right uh, now. They've definitely increased the performance of that airplane. That's, there's no doubt about it. So let's, Russ, I want to go back to airplanes and golf. We've got a few seconds before uh, this next aircraft comes in. We've got, we got some time. There's still aircraft. Right. I want to talk a little bit more about uh, today. Today's a benefit for airplanes and coffee is that correct that's correct uh they're they're asking everybody that comes in the gate to donate to airplanes and coffee um to go into uh, our mission fund uh, part of our mission is scholarships um, we do uh free as a gorgeous bird dog yeah we do uh free aviation community events uh all around north texas in our region one uh and we uh are expecting to grow that across the country. We do have a Facebook group with about 242,000 people in it. Uh, Airplanes and Coffee, the, the Facebook group. And of course you can go to airplanesandcoffee.com and see what we have going on at any point in time. Here comes another one. Dragging it in very low oh, and he touched down scratch, way, yeah. way, way low. Now one of the things I forgot to ask Eric, while he was still here, so I'll, I'll serve this up to the race control uh, booth, is with the new change. So we talked about one of the changes this year in terms of scratches that you can't touch the line at all. Previously, you could line, land on the line or after it. Uh, now you cannot touch the line at all. Can you still put your tail wheel down before the line? That was a thing we could do last season. Race control. No change to that. They just said I was, I was summoning them into my ears, and they said no change. So what you'll see, for instance, on this, I believe this is Brian Shirley. It is, it is Brian Shirley, yes. In this in Moac. Moac. If he were to touch down the, the wheel in the back, the tail wheel. And that often he, happens. He may be like doing right it. right there. Now he, and his, he did scratch. but his, his main wheels touched before the, the line correct. or touched the line. But that tail wheel can land or touch down, I guess. Uh, before the line. Yeah, and unfortunately with him, his tailwheel hit with such force it really forces his main wheels down early. Yeah, you want to kind of, <laughs> for lack of a better term, you want to tickle the grass. Exactly. You want to tickle the grass with it. Get a little drag, though, on the plane, right? Start slowing it down before the line if you can. is great. Here's Jared now in that Badlands Traveler. Woo! That thing, that new wing can fly slow. He is just creeping in. And he's going to put a little more energy into his shocks, which that G load will take up some of the uh, energy in the airplane and help slow it down a little bit faster. And again, S sub 150. Testament to the conditions today. Put some of that energy vertically into the ground, like he mentioned. Brakes locked up, and they stayed locked up the entire. You can't even call it a landing roll. A right. landing, the it's, entire it's a landing slide. slide. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And we had a go-around. Yeah, we had a go-around for spacing there. So we've got, we, we haven't really talked about them. The fine gentleman in the Airboss tent, you can see the tent on the other side of the runway there. And what they're doing is making sure that everyone keeps safe separation. So we've got that landing happening, that slide out that we just joked about, <laughs> that Russ and I just joked about. And then what'll happen is if the, someone's coming up behind them, they'll say, hey, go around. You can always go around. We want to make sure you're separated. No one's going to be bumping into each other. It, Rubin is not racing in National Stole. And so <laughs> go around and do another, another pattern and come in. So that's what's happening right now, always in the name of safety, turning base to final now. He's coming around. Looks like we've got one ar arrival coming in on downwind as well. Nice stabilized approach. 
he kind of held his altitude, so he's going to come down and try to put a little more energy into those shocks. Got to hold it off through that bounce. That extra energy, though, kicking him further down the runway. Right. That's something we haven't talked about today, but I, I want to bring it back up. And we talked about the, the big bush wheels. We've talked about Acme shocks and various shocks people have. But you're hitting, Russ, on <laughs> hitting, no pun intended, <laughs> on one of the really interesting things that you'll see in National Stoll is it's not really about passenger comfort. <laughs> like, we want to translate as much of that energy into the ground instead of forward. And uh, we've seen some really good examples of that so far. Adam Plunkett now in that Cessna L-19 bird dog, that orange and white U.S. Army uh, livery. livery, li livery? Oh my, I never say that correctly. I was on an Eastol, announcing an Eastol thing, and I got a lot of, got a f lot of flack for that too. Uh, <laughs> Adam's from Lake Providence, Louisiana. And uh, sort of agricultural flying in 1984. He's got over 30,000 hours of tailwheel time. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, what, what do you even say about that, right? <laughs> so getting ready to go with the bird dog. But let's go back to, I want to talk, Russ, more about airplanes and coffee. Uh, you know, you mentioned getting pilots and mechanics empowering people to make that a, a career choice. What are some of the things that you guys are doing to, to make that change for aviation? So we do a fly-in every month around Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, we go out, we visit with schools, we talk to um, the Chamber of Commerce. We do anything we can to get the word out to the communities that we're holding a free aviation event. And our whole goal is just to get people out, get them inspired, you know, um, excited about aviation to try to get them involved uh, we want to talk to the young folks so that you know we can convey to them that there is an opportunity in aviation uh, to make a living as a, a mechanic or a pilot uh, you know we do have a shortage of pilots in this industry we certainly have a shortage of mechanics in this yeah. industry both at the airline and in the general aviation at the local uh, airports you know, I travel around the country a lot, and everywhere I go, I always go out and visit airports and, and talk to anybody that I see out there. And a lot of times, it's a, a shop that's open, and they're working on airplanes, and I've seen some really cool airplanes doing that. But I always ask, are, are you hiring? Are you looking for any more help? And, and you know, a resounding yes all over the country. They're all saying, yes, I, we need some help. We need another mechanic, or we need two more mechanics. We got more business we know what to do with. You know, I, I think that that work that you're doing is so important because, well, selfishly, uh, my annual is taken a forever <laughs> on my 172. But, but two, right, like there, this industry, general aviation and, and, and commercial aviation in general, it, it lives and dies based on our participation. And I think one it thing does. that, you know, we want uh, a little bit of a soapbox moment. For instance, we talked a lot about about uh, LSA, right? LSA as a, a movement was going to make a big change in accessibility to aviation. Well, it can only do that if there's a volume of pilots to, to scale things, right? Like, why do things cost so much? Well, it's because there's less of us participating. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting no, too I far. I think there's something to that. I, you know, there's a, a fixed cost to aviation. And, of course, the more people involved with it, I believe, the more that fixed cost is going to be spread across. But we've just got to get more people involved. And I, I also think what's so important about the work that you're doing is that people don't, particularly young people, don't realize that this is a thing they can do, right? Like, like very, very candidly, right? Like I, I went to college for your degree in, in filmmaking and things like that. I had no idea that, it, that I could find a career in aviation at the time. It's embarrassing for me to say now sitting here at National Stoll, like that was a thing that I didn't know. There was a, a flying club at my university I didn't even know about. It, so getting the word out is so important. Um, the people, and I think I think Airplanes and Coffee is a testament to this. There goes Brian and his Moab. Yeah. Brian, there's a great example of just a good dude. Um, yes. The people are... It was that Paul Poporezny quote right, yes. for Oshkosh, right? Like, come for the planes, stay for the people. Right. Uh, the community of people, everyone I've met, absolutely has changed my life. So oh, just 
the greatest people in the world. So, yeah, trying to welcome you all with open arms. Russ and his team are a uh, little bit of an early pull there. A little bit. Cost him a little bit of time, but still off sub-100. But you, you and your team are on the on the leading edge of that. No pun, no pun intended. No <laughs> airplanes. Uh, trying to get everyone to know that aviation as a community, we're going to welcome you with open arms. If Just bef in case we forget, because we're going to get all excited about all these takeoffs and landings, you mentioned on Facebook, but again, where can people find out more about what you're doing for airplanes and coffee, and how can they how can they help? Well, there's there's a, a few different ways. You can always go to airplanesandcoffee.com and and check out what's going on. You can join the Facebook group. There's uh, 242 thousand followers in that. Uh, we get about probably 30 35 thousand posts a month, and a little over. Uh, a million, million and a half views. It's a really big community. It, it is a big community. Uh, we work real hard to, to keep it a positive, friendly place for people to ask questions and explore and, and share their aviation experiences. Um, and and it's, it's a lot of fun. Of course, we do the fly-ins. Uh, another way is you can become a card-carrying member. I was just going to ask you about that because I need to do that. So go to Airplanes and Coffee dot com or hit okay. jo and hit join or just come by my trailer where it, when you get your coffee in the morning and you okay. can qr code the the link right there on the on the sign uh for 25 dollars a year uh we'll send you out a card and uh you become a uh a, a card carrying supporter of airplanes and coffee all right well i've got a little thing to do during my coffee tomorrow i gotta get that taken care of a scratch for adam in the bird dog there heard him try to save it with throttle not quite enough. A little too little, a little, little too late. A and he was up. able to save it in the mall. But at the expense of distance. Of time, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely, definitely a balancing act to bring these things in and put them right, on, right where you want them to go. This... Uh, I mean, it's just basically a spot landing contest, right? Yeah, I always talk about how it's a spot landing competition turned up to 11, right? So exactly. Beyond, beyond just landing, uh, beyond the line, we have to get stopped, and we also have to take off short. A uh, friend of ours who's announced with me a number of times, Corey Robin, Bush pilot you might have seen on, on oh, yes. YouTube. Yes, I know Corey. He and I uh, announced the stole uh, demo Brian at Oshkosh really last working year. His, really yeah, look working at Brian. his brother there. Holy cow, Brian. And doing that, vert putting that energy in vertically, and then sliding to—that's a, a short really landing. Nice stop. You'll that's see, he was landing. right on that ragged edge. He actually, his wing started to dip when he was about a foot off the ground. So that really meant that that wing was about yeah. the point where it was going to stop flying, and that he, he just timed it perfectly. So while Jared comes in, imagine this is what Corey always said, and I thought it was such a great analogy. Imagine we're about to land on a sandbar. Right in the back country. Got to make it onto the sand. We're good. Now we got to get stopped before the back end, before we're back in the river. That's what we're simulating Very here. Very nice stop. Some really short landings now here with these two competitors in practice. You guys in the crowd, it's okay to applaud. Absolutely. You can, yeah, there we go. Thank you. I see the nice lady there the cheering for us. Thank you very much. Uh, Another landing coming in very gracefully, maybe too graceful on that last one. It could definitely be a challenge, especially in a, a little gusty situation like we have here. I think we were, when I was watching and Eric was in here, I was watching one that, that came down real short, and I think the wind just kind of fell out from under him, which caused him to come down way, way early. Well, and we talk about that balance. Uh, so for, for folks who maybe haven't flown yet or, or are, are thinking about it, one of the things that happens on a day when there's some gust factor is we carry a little extra speed to accommodate for if that wind drops out, we lose our lift. So you want a little extra margin on your speed for safety. Well, in stole flying, you're trying to shrink that margin because you don't want to carry that speed into your landing rollout. So as long as you're exactly. close to the ground, you talk about Brian flying right on the edge there he's right on the edge of the plane flying anymore but he's low right so if the if the wind drops out or he 
takes just a little bit too far. He's only got to drop about a foot. It's going to be a safe landing no matter right. what, maybe just before the line. And you can see he was really working those rudders too, so that, that's an indication that he was right on the edge. The bird dog getting ready to go. I like the, like the rockets. That's a nice touch <laughs> on the wings there. And I need to find out who this is. Nine nine Foxtrot Tango. Let me see who it's this in the mall. is. I'm gonna guess that's Jay Holt in a 1978 mall from Bagalusa. I would say that would probably be him. Mall's really competitive on the National Stoll Circuit. Obviously a legendary stole aircraft. Do a Google later tonight and read up on malls. You'd be really impressed. There's some things in their history that they've done to advertise those aircraft that are a little exciting. Brian now at the line, ready to go. I'm going to find him on this score sheet here. So, Brian. <laughs> Very nice takeoff for Brian. Best run of practice so far for Brian Shirley was 198 feet combined. To put that in perspective of everything you've seen so far today, the only person to land shorter is this gentleman right here, Jared Gerritsen, in that Badlands Traveler with 193 feet combined. Just five feet separating the two of them. He's taking a bite and off just a little bit they over 75 feet. a little feet. early. Yeah, just a little bit early, but timed it pretty well. 5-2 Lima Lima. Let's see who this is. Number 37. Is that Corey Stone Sloan? 37. Yeah, there yes. you go. Well spotted. Corey Sloan. Car Corey Sloan. From and Waller, Texas. And an Aviat Husky. Russ, what, what kind of flying do you do when you're not so giving uh, us all coffee? I own uh, two Cessna 172s. I've, I've got an A model and a C model. Okay. Um, I am a flight instructor. Okay. Uh, CFI, I -E -E -I. I don't do a lot of instruction. I do uh, do some BFRs from time to time or flat reviews, as I'm constantly reminded. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I used to do a lot of instruction, not so much. Uh, my background is education. I taught at the high school and college level um, aviation. Um, I uh, was one of, one of the first instructors at Tarrant County College is there in Fort Worth, Texas, the, their professional pilot program. And I told a, taught a myriad of classes for them as well as uh, did stage checks and, uh, and a little bit of uh, primary instruction. Good over the line there for Jay Holt. For some of the PPL students as well as uh, a lot of instrument students. So, so got a varied uh, background in aviation. That sounds great though. And a, a fellow 172 pilot, so it's nice. I've got an N model just a little bit later than, than the right. ones that you have. Why two? What's, what's just because you, you dig them, or is there a reason why you've got the two models? Or So I actually, John Noggle's the one that actually started Airplanes and Coffee, and he's got a really interesting story. Uh, he's one of those people that we're, we're trying to find, and, and frankly, well, Brian is really working that rudder hard to keep that airplane straight. It Whoa. absolutely nailed it. Nice I job, heard Brian Sir Shirley. I'm pretty sure I just heard Lexi, the line judge. She just, was excited about that one. She was shouting about that one. She's like, yeah, <laughs> something like, yeah, that's how you do that. that she was that pumped was, about it. That was impressive, folks. <laughs> but uh, John Noggle is the reason why we do what we do. Uh, he was in his 30s and really didn't realize that generally aviation was a thing. And he was a... a, a, a regional supervisor for a uh, apartment complex company that owned several units or several you know communities around uh, North Texas 
and uh, the owner of those communities was a pilot who had several airplanes, and he employed Mike Roberts, who is also Ooh. one of the founding members of Airplanes and Coffee, and uh, Mike was his A&P. And so John and Mike got together, and Mike says, hey, John, you want to go flying? He goes, well, what do you mean go flying? He says, well, I've got an airplane over here at the airport. We can go flying. He goes, you got an airplane? Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> so Mike took him up flying in, in uh, two three Tango, which is one of our airplanes, and, and John was absolutely hooked. Head over heels in love with aviation. And then uh, it wasn't too long he started working on his private pilot license, and then one day he uh, started Airplanes and Coffee Facebook group, and then I met him about a week later, and I wind up buying into their airplanes. There you go. So that's, that's how we got involved. And then when uh, we started doing fly-ins, Airplanes and Coffee just absolutely exploded overnight. We looked up within just a couple of months, we had over 60,000 people in our air in the uh, Facebook group so we uh, we got together started talking about it says you know I think we're on to something here I think yeah. we can do something really special with this so we uh, formed the the nonprofit and applied for the 501c3 and and uh, got that and the kind of the rest is history although our history is really getting started because we're only three well the, the nonprofit's only two years old okay so we've got a we've got a long ways to go, but it's 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 coming along quite nicely. Uh, in fact, Kelly Qualls was yeah, the Kelly not Qualls. mistaken. That's what I was thinking. That's who that was. So we've got a whole new uh, line of pilots coming out. Look at these guys strutting past the booth right now. Cool guys, glasses. Big Don Mickey's in the middle of them. Right. What's up, sir? <laughs> Good to see him. And look at that, race 34 popping up to the line. Looks like a Highlander. That's Justin Metters. Okay. Giving it all the beans, and it said maybe not, Justin. Maybe not. He didn't like something, so he Something didn't off of sound it. right to him, so he's going to give that a little didn't. bit of a go, around, like taxi round. And... Uh, of course, this is this is practice. So this is the right time to do that. If it doesn't feel right, really during the competition too. If it's if it doesn't feel right to you, shut it down. Now a Moac, a legendary craft, mother of all cups. Oh, Luke. here we go, folks. And Luke is off the ground pretty quick. That's Luke Spore. Clayton Stancil, I think, up next. Is that a Super Cub? No. I, I might have my blue and white and red right. airplanes I'm confused. looking for a number. 128, I think. 125. Justin taxing back past us. That thing, by the way, Justin, the first competitor you're seeing today in the unlimited class, which is basically the anything goes as long as it's legal class. Uh, these planes, whoo, they're ready to go. And the other exciting thing that you might not know, Justin, a big, big winner at Reno, the Reno Air Races, right. uh, which are looking for a new location currently. Uh, in, not in this airplane, in a very different airplane. But uh, he flies that airplane with hand controls. So it's also modified to for him to fly uh, with just his hands. So that's a, just a really cool accessibility thing that he's done to make him competitive on a, a truly high-end, high-performing stage. Yeah, you hear him uh, spool that engine up, and it's kind of reminiscing of Steve Henry. Yeah, there's a little bit of that vibe. It does. It does. Looks like Kelly coming in. He's got it slowed down. He's kind of holding his altitude. Now he drops down, kind of stepping it down as he comes across. Very capable pilot. And he goes to the alpha, the tail wheel hits, and then the nose gear falls just past the line for a good landing. So there was a great example we were talking about er earlier where the tailwind hit before sure. the line. And it's fun because 
Kelly, uh, only 100 horse in that. Right. And he really works. It makes He really gets the performance out of it. If I'm not mistaken, Luke Spore now on short final. It looks like it. Justin is raring to go. Wants to get a takeoff in the books for practice. He can uh, catch Luke with the gun cases. That's right. I always say they add a little extra lift. Oh, get over the nice line. One. Lexi's pumped about that one, too. I can hear she's right. Nice. He slid a long ways. I need to identify this aircraft coming in. I'll try to catch the number. It is 125. 125. Let's turn to the book. And by the way, folks, it is a literal book. This is one of the <laughs> highest attended swamp stools ever. I think the highest attended swamp stool ever. And that's even with a few people not making it due to weather in other parts of the United States. So pretty impressive. Lots of planes. Big spreadsheet. Yeah, there's a, there's a few more Moaks ah. sitting in Sulphur Springs waiting for the weather to break there. Chuck Olmstead. Chuck Olmstead. In a American Legend aircraft AL-18, one of the versions that they have. Big scratch for the cool Mustang paint job airplane. And now we're going to see if Justin's going to be able to make it happen. He's been waiting patiently for his turn to try again at the line. He is taxing out. That does sound like one of those Apex engines. So yeah, Yamaha Sidewinder, 92 inch four blade prop, 29 inch Alaskan bush wheels. Check him out on Instagram, Limitless Air Racing. 2016 Just Aircraft Super Stall. Justin Metters now. Three time international Formula One racing national champion. <laughs> That's nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> different approach he really never lifted his tail now a very different airplane on the line with a lot less horsepower uh, but different classes they would not be competing against each other here's Kelly Qualls in that sport cup getting the tail up a little early on the pull but he's little off little the ground early. And just nursing those flaps off. That's the thing we haven't really talked about yet, folks. So the flaps, right, are those, we mentioned they're those inboard control surfaces. They add lift, but they also increase drag. So what you need to do as you climb out is you need to remove them, you retract them. And as you do that, you lose lift. So you need to be very careful about the speed at which you do that. You, and when I say they're nursing them off, see the same thing here with Luke Spore. He kind of, well, he plopped him in a little bit faster. But if you do that too soon or too quickly, you can sink back down towards the runway. By the way, how am I doing? You're a CFI. Like, you know all this stuff for real. <laughs> like, am I explaining this all? No, okay. no, you, you, you are. You okay, are. good. <laughs> i tell you what. I'd like to go back and talk about the slats. Oh, Okay. Yeah, let's of course, check. I don't think we have anybody with – well, Luke might have slats on his. I can't remember if he does or not. We can look when he comes back around. But y'all were talking a little bit earlier about the slats. And so, in, in effect, what the slats do is they accelerate that air between the slat and the leading edge of the airplane or the leading edge of the wing so that it, it it's coming across the top of that uh, – 
camber of that wing at a much higher velocity. Therefore, it stays adhered to the wing. You know, when the wing stalls, one of the th one of the things that happen is is the wing, the wind on the top, the air flowing across the top of that camber comes detached. Correct. Yeah. When it becomes yep. detached, you lose lift. And so what the slats do is they ex it accelerates that air. So it, at a higher angle of attack, you still have relative wind coming across the top of that wing because it's it's basically funneled up in its funneled trajectory up over is, is it, up sure. and over. Yes. And so you can come across at a little bit higher angle of attack. The, and the other way to do that, we've also seen competitors with vortex generators or VGs. Yeah, the VGs can help as well. But not, I mean, is it fair to say not at the level that a slat can do? Yeah, slats are kind of an interesting thing too because they, they make a couple of different kinds. They have the, the fixed and they also have like, that, that one's got slats on it. Yeah, Justin's but, got slats on that super stole. So they have fixed and they also have the self-deploying. And, and you can kind of get in a situation where, where in, especially in a gusty situation, where the self-deployed slats can de-deploy. Right. <laughs> and cause you to uh, lose the lift on that that you were kind of hanging on a little earlier. So uh, it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting dy dynamic as you're coming in. And it's, it's really all about learning that airplane, the characteristics of that airplane, and then flying it very consistently. Kelly now trying to save it. Up. Oh. Yeah, he just got a little, little slow and a little low. And I wanna, I wanna mention to folks too that we're being pretty hypercritical, right? Like it's easy. Like th these are. Nice. It's real easy from this seat. Yeah. <laughs> like, but also, that was a great landing. Oh, right? it was like, an awesome. I landing. guess. Now, now if we go back to our our sandbar analogy. Maybe not. Like to scratch would be a great thing to do, uh, trying to land at a sandbar because you'd be, right. you'd be pretty Might get wet. Might a little wet. But on a runway, nothing wrong with that. Here's Luke. Then he was a little with a scratch, little short, little short there. The gun racks uh, not giving him that little extra boost like they normally do. And so Luke slats do uh, they automatically deploy. So when when they can become effective, they will uh, slide out away from the wing. Very graceful landing, but a scratch there. And so as we look at now, it's just practice, and there's everyone mashed up together all at once. But the best landing we've seen so far today is Brian Shirley on that third run, 162 feet combined, that takeoff that he did. 78 feet and an 84-foot landing. How are you feeling, Russ, about that given the conditions today? Obviously, our landing distances are very exaggerated because we have a wet, a wet muddy surface. surface. These, these slick tires have a tendency to slide, so it's really adding some distance to some of these competitors. Ooh. Oh, very nice. Save that one with that burst of throttle for sure. It definitely saved the scratch, but it sure cost him on distance. Anytime you get that last second burst of, of power, that really injects a little en energy into that airplane, which is going to result in a longer rollout. We've got a little bit of a downtime here in the broadcast. I want to talk about some of our other sponsors. Uh, Aero LEDs, industry pioneer and leader of LED-based aerospace lighting. Check them out. Uh, they're out of Boise, Idaho. You can see the Moax running Aero LEDs. Uh, but they're all over aviation, uh, experimental, certified, commercial aircraft, rotorcraft, military use, UAVs, space. I think they've got aero LED <laughs> products in space. They serve every spectrum of the worldwide aviation market. So big thanks to them. Also, Lift Aviation, we talked about them before uh, with their shoes, the Moax, Luke Spohr, uh, and Brian Steck in the Moax. Now Brian Shirley also always competing for a golden pair of Lyft Aviation shoes. Love to see that. Red Tag Art, a new one. Red Tag Art features innovative and handcrafted art and home goods from red tagged aircraft parts 
which are no longer viable for use. And each new design starts with a red tagged aircraft parts, seeing what it is for, uh, seeing it for what it, not what it is, but what it could be. That's everything from bottle openers to valve covers, turbine coffee tables, uh, everything in between. Check out their designs or start a custom project over at Red tagart.com. We've got a sample item that we're going to show you. Uh, check out the exhibitor booth here at Swamp Stole if you're here in person. And then we've got to talk about iFly EFB by Adventure Pilot. Uh, iFly EFB is the most complete EFB app for Android, iOS, and Windows that has all the advanced features that pilots want and the most intuitive flight planning and navigation solution on the market iFly FB team brings together the perfect balance of technology and the real world flight experience that they have on their team. So check them out. Uh, they're going to have a sample prize pack uh, that we're going to try to show tomorrow during the broadcast. They're offering three different prize packs for our competitors. So really appreciate their support. That's a lot of people. A lot of people that have to come together to bring something like this to you here in Jennings. We've got the financial backing of our sponsors who provide you know, finance for National Soul, but also prize packages, things like that for the competitors. Uh, but we also have all the volunteers. There's so many volunteers. You look around right now, you're in the crowd at Jennings. Uh, lots of people just donating their time, their love of aviation to bring this to you. Uh, a lot of the camera people out there, uh, basically almost anyone in a yellow vest is probably volunteering their time to try to bring this to you at home or here in Jennings. So big thank you to all of them uh, for being out in the mud and the wet today. Well, they're getting lined up for another run. And here we go. Oh, much, much better takeoff. And so much thrust, he's got to pull it back once he's off the ground, right? Exactly. That one just came right off the ground. This is a pretty cub that Kelly's flying. Very traditional looking. Yeah, I've got that lightning bolt on the side. I would say, I would argue pretty close, pretty close to Cub Yellow, like classic pretty close. J3. Cl you want to start a fight, uh, <laughs> go hang out with a bunch of J3 pilots and ask them which yellow is the right yellow. Luke Spornow getting ready to go in the Moac. You know, Luke's only 22 years old, but he flies that airplane like he's been in it for 30 years. Best combined score of practice, 256 feet for Luke. Off sub-125, it looks like. Maybe oh, sub-100? Maybe sub-100. It's hard to tell at the angle we're at. Yeah, we've got a weird parallax a yeah, little bit do. of the angle we're at here. Look, that was a nice takeoff for him. So this is Chuck Olmstead in this, mo not a Moac, but a, uh, a Legend Cub nonetheless. From Sulphur Springs. And he was right around that 150 mark. Definitely a different airplane between that one and the Moac. Same. Bones, kinda. Kinda. <laughs> kinda, kinda the same bones, but a very different application of the of the interpretation of the legendary design. Let's well, say the, the Moax a little more purpose built. We've got a long, s slow f final coming in. Sounds like Justin, based on... It is. <laughs> he is just kind of feeling it out. Now just maintaining the altitude as he starts to slow it down.
maybe carried a little too much energy into that. A little too much energy and just a little short for just a little just bit. in there. And I'm looking at the traffic pattern we have here, and I don't know if you've noticed this, it feels like we must have a fairly healthy crosswind at altitude because it feels like folks are kind of going a little bit beyond and then angling in versus like a standard squared up pattern. Is that Am I tracking that correctly? No, I think you are. In fact, if you look over at the windsock, the windsock is moving, constantly moving back and forth uh, so it looks to me like there is, it, it, and again, we've got, oh, here's another wind socket. It's pointing right at us. That would indicate maybe a direct crosswind. So what you'll see competitors try to do, right, is like you want as much of that crosswind on the nose of your aircraft to help, one, to help you slow down, and two, make it a little easier <laughs> to control. Right, because the, the, the more you can get that wind on your nose, the slower you're going to be able to or the shorter you're going to be able to land and also the shorter you're going to be able to take off. So that's why you'll see him cheating to our side of the runway and angling across. So they're not exactly always holding the center line. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, uh, I don't know if this is how you taught. I, w I would be uh, sitting there in the Piper Cherokee part of my training because I did it in J3s, but there's no VORs and things like that in a J3s. Right. So you got to do a little bit of radio navigation work. And uh, I wouldn't be holding the center line. And I'd get a, <laughs> get a little sectional chart, a thwap. Yeah, there, there, there might be a little chatter in your ear. <laughs> no doubt. There went Chuck. Best uh, combined score so far of 690. And if I look at the scores and kind of break them down find my cursor here he just went up a little bit that was 675 he's really given up a lot on the landings yes chuck is so that's something you're going to try to improve for tomorrow some of that could be conditions obviously we've said that a lot today it's very wet things are extending but you got to really get it slowed down and stopped to be competitive have we looked to see what the winds are going to be doing tomorrow because i personally have not I could, uh, I could take care of that for you. This is such a beautiful airplane. Gave up about, I want to call it, somewhere between 50 and 75 feet before touching down. We've got Brandon Korn coming out in his 205. And I, I say this every time. <laughs> Look at how big it is. So part of the amazing thing of what Brandon is going to, he's going to put on a clinic for all of you today. Uh, it's a big airplane. You got the heavies now. Look at that. We got, yes. we got Jeff coming out in Piperzilla. Not a plane you'd, so neither of these planes really traditionally think. what you'd think of as like right. a stole competitive plane. Uh, Brandon's got some fat tires on that thing. Uh, he's working, one of the things he said in the offseason, he's kind of known for really making the gear work on that aircraft. Right. And getting a little bit fatter tire, again, giving up some cruise speed, but it's going to help him direct even more of that energy into the ground. Uh, you Great example of the VGs on the front of that airplane. Too. Yes, so we're talking about VGs and versus slats, VGs on the front. But it amazes me when you when you look at his airplane and watch him fly it, you think to yourself, this airplane is not supposed to be able to do what Brandon Korn can make it do. He <laughs> gets is, everything there is out of that airplane. That is absolutely true. Well, he was off at 150, and it settled right back down on him. He pulled a little hard. But no doubt, as uh, he practices, he will tighten that up. He is a heck of a pilot. So long 
Finally got some weather information for tomorrow for you. Around 10 a.m. tomorrow, winds 10 at uh, 10 degrees at 12 to 18 knots. Okay. So a little bit of a gust factor there. Stole pilots, for those of you new to national stole, they, the bigger that wind number, the happier they're going to be. Absolutely. And it'll be a little more aligned with the runway than it is today as well. the Badland Traveler. It looks like he's off sub 100. I was talking to Jared last night uh, about this aircraft. Uh, he he said it's act he, he feels like he has to say it's his favorite aircraft, <laughs> but traditionally he's been known as like a Rans S7 guy. I guess he's owned 18 Rans F S7s. Eighteen. It's a lot of it's a lot of one airplane. That's a guy that likes airplanes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna play with this one for a little bit, then I'll sell it and I'll do it. Get another one. <laughs> well, I like the Rans S7, and he was like, "Do you want one?" Because I could I could do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes Brandon. He's, he's got this airplane slowed down about as slow as it can go. A little bit of a higher approach. Good over the line. Look at that. Just making the nose wheel work. Now it's definitely going to roll out, especially today. Or should we say slide out? Yeah, or slide out. That's right. Piper Zilla now. Jeff He's Abrams. Jeff does a great job in this airplane. He he definitely knows how to fly. Oh, kicking right. up some turf there. He's got to go back and replace those divots. And right on the line. Lexi said it was good. It is a good-looking airplane, too. I really like that uh, gray, black, and red together. Yeah, so Brandon is uh, owner of a automotive uh, detailing and paint shop. And uh, he said uh, you can try to find the drips <laughs> on his plane. <laughs> he said there might be one or two, but only he knows where they are. So, Russ, you're about to tap out, and uh, the Colonel's going to join me in a second. But I am. Wonder, we're we're going to trade places We're going to trade places, second. but I just want to thank you for taking the time. You're going to be hanging out with me again tomorrow during the competition, I think. Yes, yes, I'll That's be back. Great. Anything you want to say to anyone before we, uh, before we go, besides tomorrow during coffee, come get their card. Go to airplanesandcoffee.com. Hit that join and become a card-carrying member. And look for the tickets for the barbecue coming up at Sun and Fun. We'll talk a little more about that tomorrow. All right. That All sounds right. fun. All right. Thank We're you so much, sir. We're going to have a good sir. time. Enjoyed it. Jared and the Badlands Traveler coming over the line. Getting some more practice in. And again, if you're just joining us, we are about, let's call it two hours into practice here. Practice day here at Swamp Stole 2024. Jennings, Louisiana, and uh, I'm going to be briefly joined by the Colonel, Team Louisiana, wearing his new jersey. Very good. Very like that. Now, uh, Matt, if you're not from around here, you might not know, he's the original founder of Swamp Stole, 
And he promised me years ago that if I came to Swamp Stole and helped announce that I would get to hold a baby alligator, that has not happened yet. Okay, the place to hold the baby alligators is right across the interstate. You have a rental car. So why well, haven't you held a baby alligator? Well, maybe, but I don't want to go by myself. I'll go with you. Okay, yeah, that would be fun. I mean, it's a little weird I, if I just go on, like, me. Yeah, and you're like just a like, oh, guy, like, oh, you're, thanks. Hey, I'm here to, I'm here to hold a baby alligator. I heard that you know, baby alligator. Yeah, but, but you can do it. You can <laughs> absolutely do it. Just go right across the way to the, the Gator Chateau. It's a castle? It's a un chateau. It's a Not a castle, un chateau, un chateau, chateau en français. Chateau French for castle? No, no, a chateau. Okay. It, it, it's, it's just a house. Well, I guess what? It, Oh, maybe you could think of it as a fancy house cuz it's, it's a, a pretty fancy, fancy house, house Wait, for what gators. What does chateau even mean? Chateau. I'm going to we're both googling it. Okay, the gator chateau. Hold on. I think it means fancy house. What do you think it means? I thought it meant Oh, oh, we're both kind of right. A large French country house or, or castle. Castle. But I don't think they would mind if you called the Gator Chateau a castle. No, probably not. You know? Now, you know, I see uh, our celebrity line judge, Lexi Duncan, you know, she just recently got to hold a baby alligator uh, because there was a uh, baby alligator in her truck oh. as she was running around. I've seen pictures. Well, that, you, you didn't have to pay for that. Here's yeah. Piper Zilla taking off. So Jeff now, Abrams. so now you know uh, Jeff Abrams at dinner tonight. He's probably going to get accosted by two young gentlemen who came to this event to meet him. That's great because he's uh, well, he's got a he's got a Cherokee 180. They have a Cherokee 180. They want to learn how to get their all of their performance out of their Cherokee 180. And and who knows how better to get good performance out of a Cherokee 180 than Jeff Abrams. Yeah, I don't think there's anyone better than Jeff Abrams for that. He's the guy. They came to the right guy. 8960. I am doing my best to try to figure so out who everybody now, is. Now, who's, uh, who's Badlands Traveler is this? So that is Jared. Okay. Did he buy that from Doug Jackson, or is that a different no, Badlands this is, Traveler? So this is really interesting, just to, to bring you up to speed. Uh, that is the first Badlands Traveler with the... Badlands Traveler Wing instead of a Cessna Wing. It's the only one in existence right here on your runway. Wow, I'll be darned. That's pretty cool. It's a pretty unique thing. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, as we've got more folks rolling up into practice right now, Matt, I want to talk about Swamp Stole. Uh, you, this is all your fault <laughs> in, in the best way possible. Talk to us a little bit about uh, year four. This is year four of Swamp Stole. It's year four of Swamp Stole. Talk to me a little bit about how the event has evolved. So it originally started as a national stole event right after the COVID lockdowns, which we none of us remember fondly. And everybody was just looking for something to do. And I had gone to the original Lone Star Stole Competition sure. in Gainesville, Texas, where I met Doug Jackson. And... Doug was looking for a venue, and I said, you know, we got this airport in Jennings, Louisiana. Come on, Brandon. Oh, digging in the tail uh, for Brandon and making that nose wheel work. Man, Not afraid is, to do it. That is amazing. And so talking to with uh, Doug, Doug says, well, Matt, I'm, I'm looking for a venue that's going to be open that summer. And it turned out that Jennings, as you can see, it's just the perfect venue except for the, you know, when it rains which it always does for Swamp Stole, because it's not Swamp Stole if you don't have a little mud. At this point, if you're not bringing your mud boots to Swamp Stole, that's on you. That's on me. I didn't. Okay. Well, I'm I, just saying. I lit Matt, I literally was packing my suitcase to come here, and I thought, what are the chances it'll be muddy again? 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, I didn't. Every I, I got to go buy some boots. I got to go to, like, Tractor Supply or something and get myself some boots. But listen, there's no sleet. There's That's no sleet true. this year. And, and, look, I know you're from way up north, and you're used to all those cold temperatures and all that kind of thing. True. We're not used to that down here. Uh, when it sleeted last year at Swamp Stole, that was the first time in 30 years ice had fallen from the sky in Jennings, Louisiana. Well, it was cold. It was cold. It was, it was nasty. But uh, we've still got – we're on the group chat 
now, we still have pilots who are making their way here from all over the country, picking their way around the weather. So, so the, the field is going to broaden even more tonight and maybe even some tomorrow morning. So yeah, we're still going to pick people up. And uh, largest amount of pilots? Largest amount of pilots registered for a national stole event ever. This is the largest national stole registered class. Now, if the weather keeps them away, you know, we want them to be safe. We want all of our pilots to, you know, have a good trip and get home okay. So uh, we understand if they're not able to make it. But we are, uh, we are hoping to have a really good crowd for good entertainment. Back to, uh, back to how this whole thing got started. I flew in here and talked to the airport director, and he said, that sounds pretty good. You probably need to talk to the Tourism Commission. And I talked to the Tourism Commission, and the town of Jennings just rolled out the red carpet. I mean, they know how to do this because they have been doing the Stearman fly-in here oh, for sure. over 40 years. And uh, last year we got – look at him floating in. He is taking advantage of that. That is great. Oh, stop short. Wow. Maybe wow. 100 feet? Somewhere around 100. I would say maybe 110, maybe 110. He didn't give him much at the line either. So, um, so yeah, when the, when the city of Jennings rolled out the red carpet like that and they said, well, here, we're going to help you with this and this and this and this and, and all this help came in, it became obvious this was just a great venue to have an aviation event. And so uh, that and the rest is history. Uh, we've been having Swamp Stole here for the last three years. This is number four. There will be a number five. If I'm not mistaken, Levi Nogas. I'm looking uh, for the right? mustache. Look for the mustache. I That's how you'll know. he's flying that Super Cub. So now Levi was going to bring his Storch. Um, had some electrical issues with his Storch, so he brought his Super Cub, uh, which is awesome. And so, uh, yeah, so that's how the whole thing happened. And then it just kind of start took on a life of its own, Ryan. And, and look, don't get, it, don't get it twisted. I am not in charge this year. I am not the host. The host. Well, we got to talk about got that a, in we a got second. A brand new. new host, and it's awesome. And uh, the thing just kind of took on a life of its own and uh, kept growing. And uh, it doesn't show any signs of letting up. So, as, as the. Uh the founder of Swamp Stole and now switching into competitor uh -huh. purely. Any advice for, I mean, because I was there that first year. That was, a, that was an intense year. It was yes. hot and there were crawdads coming out of the runway, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but any advice for us as, we, as Swamp Stole continues? Well, you know, this has also kind of become a fly-in and you know, if, if you're on the National Stole Series, and if, if you follow it, which you should, um, you can see that they're having events all over the country. And so the trick is, you go to your first event, and you know, I have a most improved belt buckle. My first event, I, I was terrible. I stunk. And I had a lot of improving to do. Here goes Brandon Corn. Digging that tail into the turf. So, uh... You know, don't expect – we've had some people sometimes they show up to these things and they're, gonna, they're just going to step out and, you know, win first place first year. This is where you can come and learn and really learn. And don't get discouraged, but come and learn about airplanes and learn about what kind of performance you can get out of your airplane. I had a guy in my airplane this morning who uh, he wanted to do some things in his 172. And here goes the Cherokee 180. And uh, Zilla taking off. And we were talking at the steak dinner last night, thrown by the host, Mr. Adam Gordon, which, by the way, you really got to start showing up to these things earlier, Ryan, because that steak last night, oh, son, it was so good. Yeah, I missed it. Was it was unbelievable. It is hard. Seasoned perfectly. It was the, it was, the, oh, it was so good. I mean, I would put that in like one of my top 10 steaks. It was that, no, seriously, it was wow. good. It was good. I feel you know. a little jealous. I it it is it's a weird place to get to from Milwaukee commercially because <laughs> I I can't I, I can't always fly myself because uh, I got to be here. 
and okay. there's weather. Sure. So I got to fly commercial. It's a w- this is a weird place to get to. It's like I flew Milwaukee to Charlotte, Charlotte to Lafayette. It was like a long day yeah. of connections. Uh, made me want to buy a, an RV uh, aircraft real bad sitting I, there in Charlotte for three well, hours. You need to talk with Eric. He's got him a nice little RV6, man. He yeah, travels around in. He, we've he's, talked about the RV6, me and Eric. It's it's fast. It'll yeah, get you there. Yeah, yeah, it's a thing. It's, it's fast. That's I mean, it'll thing. get you there. I you want know. the thing I want. Uh, talk. <laughs> let's let's see if we get. There goes Levi in the Super Cub again, taking off. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what we got. To look forward to tomorrow. You got some stuff next to you. I don't know if we can get uh, get on oh. the main camera here, uh, but we got the trophies which Eric showed before. This is really cool. This is, oh, there it? we are. Yep, there we are. Okay, we got it. So Talk to me about this. So do you know the story behind this? I don't. This? Here, what, can I hold it? Yes, you may. Oh, it's heavy. It's heavy. Okay, well, yeah. Look, yeah. Whoa. So this is slate that was recovered from roofs of old buildings in New Orleans. Oh, no way. So this is this is part of the history of New Orleans right there. And, and these are the little finials that go on the top of the wrought iron fences in New Orleans. And so... Uh, we have Jan, uh, Karen to blame for all of this. Karen found this artist who makes these trophies, and it's so cool because you're you're literally taking home a piece of Louisiana with you. You know, I mean, this these are really neat. I, I gotta, I I've got to get props to Karen for this. Props, props. <laughs> ah, you like that? There so we, go. So we yeah. got that. What else we got over there? We got something else to show you. Well, now you. as always, as always this year. Oh yeah, we're, we're about to switch out. This year, you're going to get the. Uh, we still have the Swamp Stole medallions. These were, these are three D printed lovingly with my own look hands. Look at all that depth. You you, <laughs> with your own hands. With my own my own three D printed your these with nozzles. my own my own ha- uh, mouse clicks, and um, it's kind of funny because you know we just had Mardi Gras, and then we'd had St. Patrick's, and we went. And this is this is supposed to look like a Mardi Gras throw that you might throw from a, a Mardi sure. Gras float. You know, you don't have to show me anything. I'll just give you one. I mean, one. I'm not above it. Yeah, you know. So here, let me just – so it's it's got some weight. This also is heavy. Well, we made them big. We yeah, made them big so that you could hang that up in your hangar and everybody could see it from a long distance off. Yeah, that's good. I'm just going to – Oh yeah, yeah, it's good. You look like do you look, look? You gotta say, throw me something, Mister. You're ready. You're ready to go, man. Throw me something. Throw me mister. something, Mister. Have you ever been to the Mardi Gras? No. Yo, yeah. The come to the Mardi Gras. Folks. I I missed the steaks, and then I missed the baby alligators. Okay. And, uh, we we I've gotta never done Mardi Gras. We have got to get you caught up. We have got to get you caught up. And of course, that's just some of the prizes. Nah, that's a good landing. That Look was. At that. That he was had all the energy one. out of that thing. So there's also there's coolers. There's all kinds of sponsors that have that have come forth. Uh, buy you rum with our swag bags, and uh, each pilot got a swag bag with a, a bottle of buy you rum in it. Um, buy you rum right down the road in Lacassine, Louisiana. You know, uh, just a great company there. Oh. Look at Levi. Come on now. Added all that power, not enough to save it. Uh, definitely ran out of lift there. Uh huh. Put that right wing down. Uh, but that's also the beauty of that approach style, that lower approach style, is that right. you can hang it out like that. And if you're going to uh, drop a wing, you're you're going to be fine. So look at the flags that we've got right there. We've got a we've got a pretty good crosswind. So. Have we got anybody we need to hear about? Some sponsors of this fine event. Well, actually, now that you mention it, it's a great time to take a break. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to send it over to commercial and uh, hear from more of our sponsors. Outstanding. Good seeing you. It's a kind of a different experience buying a Legend Cub because you're buying from the owners of the company. You're you're gonna meet everybody that's gonna work with you ahead of time. They're experts at every little facet of it. 
you pretty much can do as much of the aircraft as you're capable, and then they'll kind of hold your hand through the rest of it. So I, I couldn't recommend it higher than it, it, truly the, a wonderful experience. You show up and you watch how all the fuselages are all TIG welded and their processes are second to none. They build by far the nicest airplane, lightest componentry, great styling. Ron, their painter, is spectacular. It's not like any other buying experience. You are truly buying into a family. A lot of longtime employees. I'm friends with a lot of the guys that help build my airplane. Legend Cove owners typically buy an airplane and never sell that airplane. You won't find very many of them used for sale on the market. I think you get a slightly different owner with a, with a Legend Cove. It's not just an airplane to them. It's a, it's a piece of art. It's a, it's a piece of them. It's custom designed and built for them. Any option you want is available. Hard to get much better than this. Sarasota was created actually back in the 70s, but uh, we and Bert and Vince, my two partners, they've sold their business to Ryan and Sean, which is my two other partners now. We started around in 1999, 2000, uh, just had one little spot in this hangar and, and uh, we've built it up from there. So we've been here for 23 years now. So, and then we have five facilities now here in the state of Florida. First starts in Tampa. Sarasota, Venice here is our, our main headquarters, and we have Punta Gorda and then Fort Lauderdale, Lantana. Then we have partners in Brazil, South Africa, Greece, Tullahoma, Tennessee, uh, all over the world. Uh, we're the largest Garmin dealer in the world, so uh, that's probably what we've been known for. So we do more installs on aircraft, general aviation, anything really under 10,000 pounds than anybody else in the world. So, And we've been that for quite a few years now. So. This is Acme Aero. Acme, the pinnacle, the very best. Each of our products are made to order and every part manufactured by us here in North Carolina. We design, we prototype, we model, and redesign. Each of our raw materials are made to our specific specifications. We machine, we QC, check prints, go, no-go gauges, and all specifications. We dyno each completed assembly. Each component is proudly branded with Made in the USA. Black Ops isn't the first shock we made, but it's the shock that made us. Acme Aero is the best suspension money can buy. At Aerolids, we believe that innovation is equal parts inspiration and perspiration. Since our inception in 2006, we embarked on a mission to redefine the expectations of aerospace lighting. Entering the aerospace lighting market, which had remained largely unchanged for 50 years and in drastic need of a new product with fresh look and unequaled performance, Aerolids was inspired to redefine the expectations, which resulted in a series of innovative designs. Hungry for new ideas, backed by a company that valued the patronage, customers quickly adopted the new standard of quality, design, and performance never seen before in the industry. Over the past 12 years, Aerolids installation, ranging from the experimental and 23 markets up to the space and military applications, with over 15 tactical military platforms featuring products in both overt and covert operations. Aerolids continues to lead the industry in design, reliability, and unsurpassed okay. performance. Unique in its presence and unmatched in its perseverance, Aerolids serves the aviation market from one spectrum to the next. From U to U2, Aerolids is redefining the expectations. 
basically every time I do an install I go in and I download all of the latest manuals to make sure that everything's interconnected correctly we don't miss anything we don't miss any any on off switches any uh, warning lights uh, or And everyone, we are back here in Jennings, Louisiana, Swamp Stole 2024. It's practice. It's Friday. It's muddy. It's it's swampy. But that's what we came here for, for some swamp backcountry flying action. Folks, my name is Ryan Dabrowski from Super Aero, and I am joined right now with Adam Gordon, the new new man in charge. Whatever term you'd like to give All right. it, term of endearment, hopefully. Okay. Well, you did some flying out there. What, how was it? How was it today? Uh, it's wet, slippery. Um, the crosswind didn't help anybody out with any uh, takeoffs today. Um, you know, adds a little, little bit of complexity in there for your takeoffs, having that crosswind component. But uh, other than that, we're just happy to see the sun out. Yeah, maybe cook off a little bit of this moisture that we're seeing. Uh is this, correct me if I'm wrong, first time out or not first time out for a national stole? No, not the first time. Okay, not a rookie. Not a rookie. Not no, a rookie. No. I think I've called your name before. Yeah, probably for a bunch rookie. of scratches. But oh, yeah. come on. Come on. <laughs> so, Matt, uh, we just had Matt Peterson. The colonel, Matt Peterson, was uh, up front here talking about the founding of, of Swamp Stole. Uh, he's retiring from that role. You are coming in as the new host of Swamp Stole. And I'm just curious, how do you find yourself in that position and, and what do we have to look forward to? You know, it, uh, it started last year in Sulphur Springs um, at Lone Star Stole. I was talking with Eric about it and I was like, hey, we're so excited for Swamp Stole next year. And he was like, you know, uh, uh, we, we got to talk. And he was like, uh, how do we look at, how can I help with it? And before it all went down, Matt said, you know what? I think it's time for you to take it over. So uh, there, there you go. You know, no pressure. I, I, yeah. And I was like, whoa. So and it was a little bit late in the year, uh, but we we pulled everything together. There's a great group here with uh, Def Davis Parish, uh, the city of Jennings, and then all the, the local guys here, the EAA chapter. Uh, we've all just teamed up to make this a great event. And uh, it's a hoot, man. It's a great time. And talk to me about how you got into – aviation and stole flying man so i grew up flying my grandfather was a pilot mom was a pilot uh, got the bug early on and when you get that it's hard to let it go so uh, after college i started flying and i use it uh, professionally in our in our business in order to get access across the country and uh, with that it it turns into you have to have you know an airplane for this and an airplane for that and that turned into the backcountry flying where you get to go to places that not other people get to go there's not good access to so that's what brought us here to uh, to the stole flying. Let's talk real quick before the action gets back started up here in practice. We've got a bunch of local sponsors that uh, you've brought together to help make Swamp Stole happen. Uh, who who can we talk about? Who who should we spotlight and and thank for their efforts? You know, none of them are more important than the other. We have to have all of them. Um, Jet Boats of Texas. Uh, Jeffrey's a personal friend. Uh, also competing today, just loves to help support and grow what we're doing here. It's uh, it's pretty incredible when you get people excited and what we have going on and how they're they're willing to jump in and help. Uh, same thing with Quality Kiln and Dryer. That's one of our businesses that we we do rotary kiln and dryer work around the country, and uh, it's just exciting to be a part of something like this that grows not only with each competition but with each year. Um, so. When we explain that to those guys and, and what they're helping with and how we not only grow in the, the stole competitions, but how we're growing general aviation as a whole and how to do it more safely, uh, a lot of these guys are just excited to be a part of it. So uh, we have Bayou Rum, uh, one of our local distilleries here that's, that's helping support us with um, a few different things and maybe a few uh, a few cocktails for after that help okay. mend, mend okay. some wounds, you know. So um, um, there's several others, and we can go through those at some point. But uh, – there's, it's just incredible to see a group of people come together that are willing to help and uh, and make this all come together and happen. Let me give, let me go through the list right now. We got a little bit of time before things kick off again. You, you mentioned Jet Boats of Texas. We've got Kaisek Coolers. Yeah, so Kaisek Coolers, great company. Uh, some friends that that run that and 
they have a great product. They're going to have their trailer here. It's here now, but it'll be set up tomorrow where you can demo all their different things that they have. Uh, they're local. They're going to be one of the hopefully one of the national sponsors for us. Uh, we've got with Best Tugs. Everyone's heard about that. Best Aviation Products helping out. Yeah, so, so Best Tugs, uh, Mike and Mark and uh, Paxton, they were excited to help us with this. They contributed to some of our different pilot uh, uh, swag and, and sponsorship items. Um, you know, Mike and Mark are some of the, the innovators in this field as a whole. I started building my first experimental, having talked to them over the phone on a deal, and they just said, you just got to go for it. So uh, great group of guys, great company that just does excellent work, and I'm super excited to have them be a part of our sponsorship this year. Yeah, just a legendary family I mean, just in aviation, absolute right? powerhouse. Uh, nothing in their wheelhouse they say they can't do. Uh, and that's kind of what all of us, our mentality to this is. We're going to find a way to take off shorter, fly faster, fly slower, both ends of the spectrum. So it's a ton of fun. Let's talk about Ultra Industrial. Yeah, so Ultra Industrial is one of our local uh, solutions-based industrial companies. It does a wide range from electrical, piping, steel, uh, dirt work, site-specific stuff, uh, and just want to be want to be a part of what's going on here. We've got a couple other folks to mention. We've got uh, Trigon Industries. Yeah, Trigon's uh, one of the one of the leaders out in the in the oil field, kind of in the West Texas market, uh, and that, that's that's James Berkheimer here competing. Um, you know, they're doing great work out there. We want to expose them for what they're doing. Um, just happy to have them as a sponsor, and and they're just they want to be with us for years to come. I don't even know how to pronounce this. It's it's a uh, Kuyu. It's a shirt I'm wearing. Kuyu, okay. Yeah. Kuyu, easy. Yeah. So, um, kind of, they go hand in hand with us. Uh, we use these airplanes to access areas in the world that are pretty hard to get to, and part of that being uh, in the Alaska Range and things like that. And Kuyu's develop ultralight hunting gear that helps us uh, not only be lighter to get there, but everything you have to pack in every day to make a hunt in the mountains happen. Uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago, we were big heavy cotton thick stuff and now we're all this performance gear it's lightweight and uh, every ounce you have in the mountains really pays off and uh, all that great hunting we do we access it with either a super cub or a beaver or a 180 so uh when, when i discussed it with Kuyu, they were excited to be a part of it because they use these airplanes to get to these remote areas that they want to go to so uh, oh. we're excited to have them be a part of the team uh we've got a couple other to talk about we got clay and uh, Doming Domingue? Domain. Welcome, Domain. To, welcome to South Louisiana, Domain. Cuyon. I can't read. That's Domain is what we got Dom over here. Domain. That, that whole word is Domain? That's it. That's it. So, okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely uh, showing my yeah, northerner. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's That's okay. why you're here. It's okay. But, yeah, the, uh, Clay uh, or Darren and them are, are local guys here that kind of the same thing. I didn't want to see anything die here that we have. We have a great event here in Jennings. We have this event. We have the stole, uh the Stearman flying every year, been going on for 40 plus years, and and I want to see Swamp Stole do the same. So they came together to help us on this, uh, where we could keep it alive and, and keep it going. Freedom Sky Truck Rentals. So that's a, that's a trucking company that helps service the oil industry, and that's looking everything from moving sand, water, and everything like that out there, uh, mostly in the in the West Texas region, but different areas of the country. So. Uh, Clemens Insurance, I know these folks. Jerry, oh, yeah. hopefully if, Jerry will be out here competing. If, uh, if, you, if you compete and you're not best friends with Jerry, you just hadn't met him yet. You can't meet a better guy. They're here to support this, in, this, this group and competition as a whole. Uh, super outgoing guy, just loves what we're doing here. So the first hint that I was going to be uh, being a part of this, Jerry said, well, man, I want to make sure I got, I got a sponsorship with you on that. So Yeah, he's great. He's I, I lo love having him be a part of it. Uh, we already talked about Bayou Rum. I'm looking forward maybe tonight to, to, to trying some out. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Beard Aviation Services. Yeah, so so Bruce is a, is a local guy here, probably one of the better tube and fabric um, guys in the nation uh, for rebuilding airplanes from decathlons to cubs to huskies. Um, he loves coming out to this. He's had his hand on several of these airplanes, uh, including all of mine for that fact. But uh, – him and him and Robbie Air Texas uh, has been a sponsor as a whole. Bruce is one of the people that uses that that product and just does some beautiful work out there. So we're happy to have him be a part of it. Uh, and his tube and fabric expertise is just great to have here on the field for anything that may come up throughout the day. I mean, it's so amazing to see. We've got this. You know, we talked about all the local sponsors for the the Swamp Stole specific sponsors locally here, and then the annual sponsors that we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, a lot of people coming together to make something like this happen to, to 
we you know we had Russ uh, from Airplanes and Coffee here yep. just a minute ago talking about how we we want to increase aviation participation. We want to make sure that this thing that we've all found so much value in, uh, both practically and you know from a social and, and emotional standpoint, right? Like you're talking about not only are you you know utilizing aircraft to go hunting things like that but there's a there's a social and emotional connection too there right there's definitely a brotherhood here um from all over the country uh from alaska canada south louisiana west coast east coast you were calling each other during the week what do you how how, you know i had a problem with this a prop a wheel bearing whatever it may be uh we all help each other and and look forward to it we share hunting and fishing places and things like that we had we had a big cook up last night and you know we talked airplanes, but most of it was where we like to go hunting and fishing and how we use these airplanes to get there. So that, I mean, that's such a huge value, right, that we all get out of this. And so it's just great for me to see, uh, you know, I mentioned it when I was talking to, to Russ, right? Like aviation has totally changed my life. The people, the friends I have, the people I've met, literally we've had the opportunity through aviation. It always feels like you just randomly happen upon <coughs> like honest to goodness american heroes you know people who've really contributed to the country in ways all of that stuff just is like right here for the taking uh it's it's such a great you, you mentioned brotherhood i'd say camaraderie too right like just like I, a real deep connection. I, would, I would say this is the best group i've ever come across in different activities of life that i get into that your chance of meeting a great person that is willing to help you in any way is there a friend of mine that's competing today met another friend of mine last night I turn around and he's out flying his airplane, just testing something out. Met the guy four hours ago. Says, "Get after it, have a good time," you know. But it's that that trust and uh, kind of that that cohesion within a group that you have within the aviation industry. Yeah, I'd qualify that basically <coughs> everyone's pretty great except for serious pilots, probably. <coughs> uh, yeah, I choked a little bit on that. I don't even know what <laughs> no, to I'm say. just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just <laughs> pull kidding. the chute. Just pull the chute. Pull shoot. the chute. <laughs> no, uh, I've got my my good friend Brian Turner, who's uh, got the YouTube channel Just Plain Silly. Got to rib him a little bit for they used to have a Cirrus. They just sold it. They're, they're great airplanes. I have nothing bad about them. N- nothing bad to yeah, say. Yeah, it's purely jealousy. Yeah, that's, that's just all it is. a little bit of jealousy. That's all it is. Um, although we could do maybe an event, Cirrus, if you want to come out, we you could do an event where uh, they could win because they could just pull the chute and – yeah, but you have to do it three times, and I don't think they could do that. You got to do a repack, that, <laughs> repack that shoot real quick. Um, uh, so let's talk about let's talk about conditions for tomorrow. You know, obviously, the the wet conditions today are a, a concern. Uh, as the host, you know, what can you tell us about what things are going to be like tomorrow? So you know, it's it's you, you got to pull an audible when you have this. We have rain. We had a good, great plan, a good layout on our map. Uh, we get a couple inches of rain, you ball that up, you throw it away. Uh, we've changed how we're going to set up our food vendors, how we're going to set up access to the property, um, how we're going to stage airplanes, um, just just changes it up. But, you know, I- improvisation on the ground is one of our strong suits. Uh, when you're flying in the air, it's never the same situation. Um, and a lot of those situations you don't know about till you get in them. So we have a great group of people here that are kind of adapting to what's coming up. And uh, if the wind keep, keeps blowing and the sun keeps shining, things are going to dry up and it's all going to work out. So we're excited for tomorrow, and I'm, I'm hoping we have a big group turnout. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of local people that are really excited about it. So, Yeah, I mean, and Swamp's still a bit of an institution in, in Jennings now. It, it is, uh, and it's the same thing for the Stearman Fly-In. It's, it's the whole community comes out for it, and, and that's kind of my end goal with this. I would love to look back 40 years from now and talk about – you know how great Swamp Stole is, and how we do it every year. So, I mean, is it a forty-year picture for you? Absol- absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, if I'm into something, I'm into it all the way. I promise you that. I mean, what what can we look forward to in the future? Obviously, this is the first year. New, you know, the the torch has been passed from the colonel, but but what what are the things you're planning that you can share with us now for you know Swamp Stole 2025 and and forward? Man, anything we do in any endeavor, the first thing we want to do is work on our infrastructure. Um, we're seeing that today. It was horrible last year. A lot of that we can't control, but we're taking some of that knowledge now. We're going to try to better set our infrastructure up to handle these wet conditions. Next year, it'll probably be a drought, and there won't be any of this, but hmm. we're, we're going to be prepared for it either way. Other than that, we're, we're getting more food vendors involved. I want to get the community more involved. We're working with some of our local community colleges. Uh, we have a, a great aviation program here right down the road, about 30 miles. We're going to have them involved and uh, some more some more of the, the STEM-type stuff. Um, Bruce, who's also one of our uh, 
our sponsors and one of our volunteers heads up the Chenault Air Show, uh, which is a very large air show, and he's he's excited to be on board with this so we can grow this not just from a racing aspect but the whole community being involved. Um, there's a lot that comes from stole competitions outside of just having fun with our Super Cubs or our 180s. The things that we learn in these airplanes transition to if you're flying a 172, a 182, a King Air, a 414, managing power and energy management is the same no matter what airplane you're flying in. And when you fly it more precise in these airplanes because it matters if you'll fall out of the sky or not, you tend to let it bleed over into your other flying. So uh, there's a lot of general aviation pilots that love to come watch this and see the control and the amount of the time has to go into this to perfect this art that we have here. So you're competing tomorrow. So I was I was gonna say like who should we watch tomorrow? Who's the one to watch tomorrow? You you were gonna say well me I'm no I'm amazing. no but, don't don't watch me. But uh, I will teach you a lot of bad habits. Um, you know I, we we just fly farm to farm having fun. River bar river bar. Um, you know is our main flying. The the person to watch that has my attention. Uh, uh, Badland Stoll has been building some great stuff. Clint's been a friend of mine for years. Um, and Jared is, is running that, that blue Badlands Traveler, and I was super impressed with him today. Uh, I think he's going to be the guy to watch for me at least. I'm, I'm envious right now. So Yeah, best takeoff in practice for Jared Gerritsen, uh, 193 combined. Yeah, it was impressive. Uh, it's It's been really wet. He was landing short, which means he's, his power and energy management was just down pat. So he, he, hats off to him today. He did excellent. But uh, – I want to get my hands on the airplane and go play with it myself. So yeah, he invited <laughs> me to go for a lift, uh, uh, give it a put, get a little stick time in. Uh, we heard some engines starting up over there. I think I see Joel Milloway, if I'm not mistaken, and the Tiger Shark taxiing up. Uh, so hey, we're getting practice started back up. If you're here in Jennings and you're a line judge, you got to get back to the line to do your duty uh, to score these takeoffs and landings. We really appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, things are getting things are getting underway. Yeah, the, sorry, I interrupted you a little bit. Jared Garrison, though, that Badlands Traveler, uh, he he very hard tried to sell me a Ranza Seven last night. He's a he's a well, S7 you know, guy. That, that's what we have to do is we have to get rid of certain airplanes so we can have more of them. So you know, <laughs> you, the hangers are only you're so big. You know, you hit five or six, you got to start weeding them out. So I love it. I love the way you think. So, okay, so that, that sets the stage, though, for us. I mean, going into next year, it's funny because I've, I've, I've been lucky enough to be at almost every Swamp Stole. I think I missed what uh, would have been two years ago. It took the family to, uh, you know, spring break kind of land. Gotcha, so we, we gotcha. had to go hit the, the place where Mickey Mouse lives uh, together. So I missed that one. But um, did I miss it? I don't even know. There's so many. I remember the first one, and I remember last year. Maybe it was – maybe I'm thinking of Sun and Fun. Yeah, maybe I know you were here last year. I so. was here last year. Who knows how many have been. I there we go. Sub 100 right there. That, that that's, is, Im, that's impressive. He, he's great on the controls on that airplane. I love to watch him fly. So, uh, long story short, it's been amazing watching it grow. And to be part of it has been an honor. Uh, and I just can't wait to see uh, what you do with it, what happens next. It's going to be good. Yeah, we're definitely excited about things to come in the future. Uh, we're, we want to continue to grow it. And uh, just get more people involved. That, that's that's the big thing. All right, who's up next? I think this is Christian. Yeah, it sure is. You know Christian? What can I, you tell us? I, I do. A friend of mine built that airplane. Uh, great, great builder. And I'm excited to see the airplane out here today. And uh, I mean, he was sub 125 right there. So uh, I think he's I think he's doing well. From Dodge City, Kansas. Yeah, he's, he's a rookie this year. We talked him into it at, at Sulphur Springs last year. We gave him a lot of peer pressure to uh, start competing. So I'm excited to see him out today and be doing well. We have another rookie right here. He's uh, he's learning what it takes to, to compete in the in the sole, you know, environment. Um, a lot of us fly off airport and, you know, kind of make it what we want it to be. But, but here when you're – Within the bounds of this competition, it's it's a little bit different. So, I'm excited to see how he how he keeps working through practice and how he's how he's going to grow with it. Is that Jay Holt? It's Jay Holt. That's correct. Uh, Jay Holt. He's uh, also one of our sponsors with uh, with Cooler Company. Oh, rock on! Okay, plane. We haven't seen practice yet. Now we got a Cessna 170 there, and he was uh, he was somewhere around the around the 150 mark right there. 
And then look at uh, Dan Reynolds finally uh, showing up to practice here in the Chinook. Uh, talking to Dan last night, you know, this aircraft actually, he's got a, a multiple of, of these uh, Chinooks. And this one lived for a while in Texas while yep. he went back to Canada. And he said, you know, it felt good to get back into it to uh, get this specific airplane. And watch how short... Well, and, and it's incredible what Dan can do with that airplane, but just because the wind wind conditions are not so favorable, we saw Dan, you know, plus 50 feet right there, and we've seen Dan be, you know, sub 20 feet. So I've uh, seen that aircraft land shorter than it is long. It's incredible what that airplane can do, and, and not only the airplane, Dan knows how to handle it. That's what it really boils down to. He has a lot of time in the backcountry flying that airplane or those type airplanes loaded, and uh, that's really what it takes to learn the airplane to be proficient with it. And he's, I mean, follow Dan on Instagram, uh, watching him fly. <laughs> he's landing in places that quite possibly no one has ever been. That's the beauty. Like, that remote. The, the beauty of, of these airplanes, yeah, you get into northern Canada, uh, the Alaska Range, the Brooks Range, you can be landing in places that a, a person's never stepped foot. It's really incredible. Here's Joel now, over the line, clean, and just sliding. He finally had to give a little little up on the brakes. Yeah, it's uh, the wet conditions make it tough. I know when I was out there and everyone in my class, uh, it seemed you, you could make it across the line, get on the brakes as you normally would to have a sub 100 foot landing, and you would slide to the 200, 250 mark with no, no problem. So I'm hoping these conditions dry up a little bit. Like I said, if the wind keeps blowing and the sun's out, I think we'll be in a good place tomorrow. Does that change your approach, you know, knowing it's wet? I mean, obviously you can get on the brakes, keep the tail down. You're just going to slide forever. What does that do to your approach as you're coming in? So we were discussing that within our group earlier, and it, and it seems, you know, to slide the leash, you want to be going as slow as you possibly can. Um, with that, you can either drag it in or you can have a, a stabilized kind of approach where, you know, sub 30 miles an hour. Um, and we've seen both of those today. I'm not sure yet which one's going to be more successful. I know for me today, the stabilized approach gave me a shorter landing, and, and we'll just see how it goes. Like I said, hopefully the conditions dry up and, and we don't have to fight it quite as bad tomorrow. We saw Jay come in landing. He came in pretty hot, and I'm thinking when it's this wet coming in hot, you're going to have a lot of – yeah, a lot of, your brakes aren't really helping you the way they are normally. No, and it's almost when you hit the brakes, you feel like you speed up a little bit. So uh, one of our one of my techniques coming in, we're kind of kind of in and off the brakes uh, to to try to slow down as much as you can, but not lock them up completely. A little bit of uh, anti lock brake simulation. A little ABS in there with yeah. your own feet, you know. <laughs> we got a scratch there, but like I said, the wind conditions are shifting around a little bit. I know I had a couple fall out on me, so uh, you want to be right there on that edge. And, uh, but you have to be do that in a safe manner. So if you see that it's not going to work out, it's better to take the scratch instead of, you know, dragging it across the line and dropping a wing. Here comes Dan just on a nice, slow, stable approach. I'm curious to see uh, what the wet weather does to him and, and how it affects his, his total landing distance. This plane can fly in an uh, – frustratingly slow and, and I mean that in the best possible way I, absolutely I've been uh, it, people who watch my content know a lot that I, I have a tendency to fall hard and fast for aircraft <laughs> and I the Chinook website <laughs> to buy a kit uh, there's a lot of views on that for me <laughs> a lot of hits huh? a lot of hits <laughs> so here's Dan now working that stick and he's just easing in and out of the power. And look, right across the line there. Uh, that's amazing. Su I mean, sub 50 feet right there. That's that's going to be the shortest one I've seen today so far. And sliding about five five to ten in feet of it. Probably maybe. more than that, uh, to be realistic. It's hard uh, for us it, to kind of It's hard to tell, but based on the conditions that I saw out there today, it's probably more than that. So the Cessna that is, is uh, hanging out with us right now, the – Blue and white Cessna. That's a 1954 Cessna 170 Bravo model. Very popular in Stoll. The, That's right. The, the B model. That's piloted by Shane Burns, who's a rookie. And it looks like he's added a little bit to it. He's from Palmer, Texas. He's added the Sportsman Stoll kit. 
some VGs and uh, looks like some P-Punk P-Punk stuff to it. So that's yeah, I, I can see the uh, the cowling edition there. He's got the, the engine upgrades and uh, right. Uh, I'll be excited to, to see him perform out there. I know we just watched the first run, but I didn't get to, get to watch him close enough. So he's definitely got all the right tools to be successful in this arena. I think I think maybe a scratch for him the last time it would be on this sheet here, but yeah. we'll see what he does. Rookie class, just for folks new to National Stole, uh, it's a great thing. I think it was added last year, and basically what it does is it allows you to come in and compete in a lower pressure environment against sure. other rookies. Uh, the twist is that if you win, you can't be a rookie anymore. Uh, some people forego it, which is fine, but basically a way to get brought into the sport, get some mentorship from people. There goes Christian now. Uh, yeah, that, that was a, that was a very nice takeoff on lifting the tail there. He was he was right in that 125 mark. It looked it looked good from here. Right up on the line now in the mall for Jay Holt. Yeah, so Jay's been doing a lot of testing. We, we spoke last night. He's been doing a lot of practice, and he's excited about the event. I, I expect to see him around the country this year uh, learning more about this. And in front of the booth, as Jay takes off, uh, Pat McIntyre just walked up in front of the booth, and I have a feeling he's scoping out this guy on the line in the other Rans. He, he's shaking his head no, but I think I might be right. He's just curious, wants to see what happens here for tomorrow. He's yeah. watching real intently we're, now. We're all friends here, but we all also want to win. Uh, we, we, we even share some secrets, but we, we definitely all want to be number one. Pat, that was short. That was short, Pat. <laughs> He's, he, he's shaking his head with me. That you think you can that. handle it? <laughs> he's like, it was a little short. Here we go with the 170. I'm going to gonna critique a little bit, watch him and see how he does here. He's got all the right tools. Very nice, very nice job. So interesting because if we compare, sorry to like build a little of a grudge match for tomorrow, uh, <laughs> Joel in the S7 and, and Pat in the S7, uh, Joel's running a 912 and Pat's now running a 914. So there's a, a thrust difference there. Sure. Um, it's going to be real interesting to see how they do. Here's Dan and now. Dan's kind of quartered into the win a little bit this time. and uh, Sub 50. Yeah. I, I, I feel uh, like. I think he was just over there. You know, we, I, I tried one myself, quartering into the wind. It was just too much of a crosswind to do do very much good for what it what it is. We have to have kind of a quart, <clears throat> quartering headwind to kind of make that work for the best for us. Dan's best run or first run in practice, a combined score of 95 feet, which would put him in first place for practice. Absolutely. Obviously, unlimited, easy, unlimited uh, class where, you know, the airplane is very unique. Uh, the next closest score in practice today was Brian Shirley in the MOAC. It, with 162. Yeah, I watched Brian's runs, and, man, he really knows how to work that airplane. It's uh, it's really a pleasure to watch him fly it. He's, he's great in it. Jay Holt in the mall. Now, wait, I was pronouncing this Bogalusa. That is, that's Bogalusa. Boga. Bo Bogalusa. Bogalusa. All right, okay. so it wasn't too far off. That's right on the Pearl River over there if you want to go take a little ride. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think he came in a little short. A little short, but very beautiful. It's very beautiful. beautiful. And, and you know, tonight we'll, uh, we'll all get to critique each other. We can uh, armchair quarterback, and I'm going to talk with Jay. We'll talk about a little bit more steeper descent profile where he can, you know, manage his power a little better and come in in a flare and deplete all that and, and come in. I, I think he will think he has a lot of potential there with that airplane. So that's part of being a rookie is there's, you know, so many people here that want to help. And, you know, not everybody has someone to, to get out there and give them tips and pointers. So it's exciting to see these, these guys grow from competition to competition. Joel's Ooh, good over the good line. And that's a short one. That's a very short one short. right there. That's a good job. Curious what the winds are doing. I don't remember exactly what they were this morning. 
This morning it was a quartering headwind, but then it turned into a straight crosswind. It stayed like that for a few hours, but it's kind of kind of looks like we're turning into a little bit more of a quartering headwind now. Yeah, we've got uh, three zero zero at eight knots now for the wind. So yeah, a little bit more on the nose. Here's that Cessna 170 with our rookie in it. A little bit of speed. Good over the line. Yep. Now he's got to get it controlled. Oh, there he goes bouncing down the runway. That's that's the tough part. You really got to watch the, managing the power right there as you come across the line. And, and that's coming from someone who scratches more than they, they get across the line. So Now the helicopter. Dan, uh, we've got some time since he's coming in nice and slow. I was going to just mention, we, we mentioned all the national sponsors, but I want to just again thank Lad Gardner Aviation Insurance. They've been underwriting this uh, and been, been a part of National Stole since the beginning. Uh, you got to check out the check them out on the sleeve of the of the t-shirts. Yep, they're they're right there on the merch tent. So they've been been with us since the beginning. So Lad Gardner, thank you to you guys and gals for all of that. Dan now putting on a clinic in his little Chinook. Beautiful, beautiful job. It's incredible what he can do with this airplane. You can tell he flies those airplanes on a regular basis. He, he really has them down pat on what he's got going on there. So let's see what he did. I was going to say that it felt like a sub 50 foot landing. His takeoff, oh, I was a little bit wrong. Uh, takeoff 58 feet that time, landing 62 feet. So the parallax here is pretty severe for us yeah, in the yeah. booth. Yeah, you have to look at both of them right there and kind of kind of gauge in the center where, where you're actually at there. His best landing actually was his first one with 47 feet, which today feels like a, a bit of a Herculean feat. Wow. Christian coming up to the line now. Let's look at that, actually. I'm curious how Christian's doing compared to previous. So an improvement, for sure, the second bit. Uh, we had a best score of 324, and now we just put in 315. Obviously, conditions are different. Well, uh, we're going to see that as the day goes on. As the strip dries out, you're going to get better braking, and as we get a little wind change, so... Very interesting part of practice is how you see planes that would never compete against each other compete. You got the you know the carbon cup. You got a Valdez special Chinook. <laughs> you got a Cessna 170 Bravo model. You've got the S7 Tiger Shark. You got a Mall. I mean, these are all variations on a theme in terms of. Uh, Bush planes, right, and, and a lot of legendary bush planes at that. But, but you have the full spectrum right here. You have uh, Dan in a single seater, and and the Mall and the 170 and four seaters there. So, uh, a, a lot of different utilitarian items there between those airplanes. And here is the Mall. Oh, excellent timing on that. He popped it just right. And the Tiger Shark. Yeah, he he's always. Uh, Always a contender to watch, that's for sure. Here goes Joel. Oh. Off short. Woo. Yeah, 60, 60 or so feet there. That was great. Looks like we got some swag just came in here. Yeah, we got a little bit of swag. Whoa, taking a bite. Yep, got there. the tail up high. Looks good. He, he was a little early on that, but I, I get that. Uh, I had the same problem this morning myself. 
So if we can, uh, well, let's wait till Dan takes off, and then we have something to show. We have a couple things to show you guys okay. uh, from the boot, but we'll, we'll let Dan take off. We'll get him cheating into the wind, getting that uh, as much of that crosswind that we mentioned from the left, his left, uh, making sure he's got as much of that on the nose as possible. Yeah. Tail up. Whoa! Oh, okay. there you go. There's there's this. There's the 30 to 40 footer right there. That's what we've been looking for. We got a whole group of competitors sitting there watching this right now, and they all laughed in unison. Yeah. There's just a u in unison laugh. What did we just see? When are you guys ordering your Chinooks? Tomorrow, I heard. Okay, okay, we got one tomorrow. You know, I watched Dan build these, and I think I just want to call Dan and say, just bring me one down, you know. It's, uh, it's definitely a, a cool airplane and a fun airplane to watch compete. All right, let's quick, quick in between landings here. Let's go to the booth if you guys can. Uh, back in the broadcasting, we got to show you guys some stuff. We got this, uh, this cooler. It's a cooler backpack thing yeah. in the national stole or uh, swamp stole colors. And I was briefly blinded by the shiny medallion. Yeah, we have a, a, a super cool emblem in here. This is our, our logo that we have. Uh, they were able to actually put it on the cooler, and uh, it's it's just a cool setup. It's super lightweight. It's going to be great. Uh, for anybody flying airplanes. I know uh, I was speaking with Jillian about it, and um, I have a cooler that I carry, and I think I'm not going to retire that one and move over to one of these. Uh, they're, they're great. Yeah, these are really cool. They yeah. are way lighter. I thought it was going to be heavier. They're way rubber. lighter. And look, in airplanes, especially backcountry airplanes, that's what we're all about. Yeah, that's uh, that's cool. I thought it was going to be a thicker rubber. Like I have like um – uh, it looks a lot like that. Uh, like Patagonia makes like the black hole duffel, right? That's yep. like that very, very thick rubber, durable rubber. This feels that durable, but like half the weight. It, maybe? it is, yeah. And um, I'm excited to get my hands on one. I've already kind of, kind of said I got, I got to have one of those for the airplane. We'll see if they can. Oh, and he's going to milk it right across the line there. Great job. Joel oh. carrying off. Uh, Lexi's not. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lexi says, says it's good. good. That's what it looked like from in the booth here. So. We've got Dan coming in on base now. And the 170 on short final. And you can see his pitch profile right there. He's pretty flat right now. So we'll see if he's going to go into a tail low as he comes in here on the line to kind of see his landing uh, technique here to be as short as he can. Good over the line. Yep. That bounce again. So yeah. what, what feedback would you give? So, so coming in like that, uh, it's about energy and power management, and he's just carrying a little bit of energy as he's coming across the line there. So uh, that'll be one of the things. Look, I don't claim to be a 170, 180 pro. They always bounce for me too. So uh, the springy gear right there, you really got to have them at stall and really plant them on the ground for them to stick. I know that's something that some various vendors are coming up with products to help with that. We see that Warren yeah. Groblar and his uh, 180. Uh, he's got the yeah. It's Acme. Ag it's, a, it's the Acme Aero gear, and the the wonderful thing about Acme, uh, I work with them on my Cub as well. Um, that you can take that on and off. So if you're making a long cross country trip, you know you can remove it and have some better airspeed. And then when you're in the back country, you can strap it on there and you just soak up all that. You don't get the balance out of that gear. So it's a really cool product that they've got going there. And Dan's hovering right now. Dan maybe will make his way across final at this point. I don't know. Giving a little burst of power. But, yeah, I mean, maybe what he's just waiting for is the rotation of the earth to put the line underneath him. You know, he works it to the best of his advantage, and you, you can't be mad at him for that. Although I guess we're going the wrong direction for my rotation earth joke to work. But, anyway. There you go. That's Over. what we all came to see right there. <laughs> That's what we all came to see. Wonderful job, Dan. Clip that and post it. Yeah. Holy cow. Hey, guys, that, that's with some crosswind. Dan, with, with a, any a no wind or any type of headwind, can make this airplane do some incredible, incredible things. It's really something to see. Best, <laughs> by the way, well, we were yapping. Uh, best run for Dan now and during practice. A combined score of 63 feet. Yep. Yeah. And uh, if, if conditions are good tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised to see that sub-50. And uh, since we said sub-50, I, I feel compelled to say, I say that I try to work it in at least once every broadcast. 
that you know a, a F-14 Tomcat is about 50 feet nose to tail. Yeah. So we're talking. We could land like Dan could be landing on the back of a. Of, of, of Maverick's jet. You know, we need to talk about getting that out here as a static display, and we can see about landing on top of them or something like we that. We should do that. Yeah, we should yeah. do that. It, just if you have a spare Tomcat. Yeah, anybody out there, reach out to us. We'd be happy to take I, that on. You know, We could br put that out here. We could have that. I, I'm yeah. sure uh, <laughs> there's, there's a whole reason why, by the way, why there aren't a lot of those around. But that's a thing for you to Google later or go to Wikipedia. <laughs> It's complicated. <laughs> it's a bummer. Uh, it's pitiful. Uh, all right. We got a whole new section of competitors, I think, coming out to practice. Got some new planes I haven't seen before. Yeah, we, we have some new competitors and some guys that were hung up for some weather that are finally making their way in. So. So while they're getting ready to go, uh, if you wouldn't mind, hand, there, we've got some things there, we candle things. We were talking about these before. I mean, I thought these were taxiway lights. I thought we were just giving away yeah, cool so taxiway let's, lights. Let's and, show this on And the, I see a candle. Does it smell good? I don't know. Did it, you check it out yet? No. Oh, it does kind of smell. What does it smell like? I don't know what that is. It's not bad. That's, that's Jet A. Is that that's Jet A? That's Jet A. It's exactly what that is. I dig that. I dig that. That's red. That's red tag. Throw throw this up on the screen, guys. That's that's a red tag art uh, sponsor. So runway light converted into a candle. Little jet a. Yeah. Is that what it is? That's kind of what I'm gonna go with. I wish today. it was smell o vision I could you could figure it out I at mean, home. Uh, so that's that's. You a cool think you thing. could order nav gas as well? I, yeah, maybe you could. We'll yeah. have to find out. They're going to be – they're set up here, I think. Awesome. It's I definitely got to have one of these for in the hangar. That's for yeah. sure. So. Yeah. You know, bring that bring that home. So go buy that in the merch in the merch tent. You can go check that out. That's a thing. Uh, look who just uh, taxied by there in lawnmower. That's uh, Hal Stockman getting ready to go. He came in uh, just a little bit earlier this morning. Again, we talked about the challenging weather across the United States. A lot of pilots kind of like a state away waiting for things to clear. That's right. Yeah, I think we still have some guys coming in later today. So we hope uh, the weather will clear up and we can make that happen. Thank you for having me on. I'm yeah, going to hand it over to Eric. No, thank um, you so much for coming. Thanks for taking on the, the exciting We're just going to keep challenges. it alive. That's what's going to happen. We're going to keep it going. I'm not going to say there won't be some growing pains along the way, but we're going to get better every year is our goal. Yeah, well, I can't wait moving. to see you. I look forward to chatting with you tomorrow, seeing you fly tomorrow. Thanks for taking the time thank today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so now we've got number 53 on the line, and that aircraft looks very familiar to me. That's Mr. Don Mickey in a 180 from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Back and at it again. Don took a hiatus for a medical challenge, but he is back. He is flying and he is excited to be back here at Swamp Stoll 2024. I'm trying to remember, Eric, which competition it was where Don was it uh maybe it was Sodbusters where uh Don was it was sun, it was this great moment in National Stoll sunset Don's taxing by and a pigeon comes and just rides on his wing for a while it was taxing <laughs> by do you remember this I'm trying to remember what competition that was at I don't recall but it does not surprise me that's the it was Memphis Memphis all right okay what a wild ride it's been Beautiful 170. I did want to jump in here on this red tag art you were showing off here. There's some cool stuff. Obviously, these are candles, right? But they're supposed to smell like Jet A and 100 low lead. Okay, so wait. Was that the – maybe that was the Jet A one. Is this the 100 low lead one? I, I don't, I'm not convinced, I'm but it's pretty it. cool, man. It's pretty cool stuff. And the other thing they have is a light that pulls the METAR from whatever airport you tell it to, and it looks like a regular runway light. But it actually lights up with whatever color. Is it VFR, IFR, moderate? Like, it is designed so you can look across your living room and know whether or not you should go to the airport. 
Oh, I got to get that. It's super, super cool. That'd right. be really helpful. I don't want to have to read. Well, why would you want to read? So or call or call a phone number. I got a correction from Karen. She says this is supposed to be the new jet smell. So a new jet smell oh, is what that is. Not not jet A, new jet smell. That All tracks right. more. It didn't have the the bite. The bite. Man, super excited that we are right back here at Swamp Stoll. Finishing up our practice day. Tomorrow's competition is heating up, and it is going to be an incredible one, as always, with pilots like Hal Stockman in the Unlimited Series. Here we go. On the roll. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was a good one. The gauntlet has been dropped. Uh, well, I think it was thrown, and even then, I will say, if we look at the differences in our limited series pilots right now out there, we've got raw power. We've got power mixed with light, Hal, and we just got light, light, light with Dan. These guys are going to bring it, and I'm super fired up to see what happens tomorrow. It's anyone's race at this point. Yeah, so we've got three, yeah, three in the unlimited, Dan Reynolds, Hal Stockman, and Justin Metters. You literally described that exactly correctly. It's almost like I've been paying attention. Yeah. Here's the thing is Justin, you know, coming to it kind of fresh. Very National fresh. championship at Reno. But this is a totally different kind of flying. Totally different kind of flying. And speaking of which, that beautiful polished 180, every time I see it, I offer to buy it from him. He's got a dine-on suite in that thing, and it is just stunning. Absolutely love what he's done with that airplane. And to see Don back here in the series just makes my heart happy. This really is a big family of pilots. It's people who get together and create some incredible content, do some great flying, and Don's a big part of that. He's Heck, many of the signs and banners out on that field Don built, Don made. You know, he's he is the consummate professional and a heck of a stick. Great to have him back here with us. And now we have this beautiful 170B. Cross the line. Gives up about 50 feet before touching down. Gentle landing. You know, it's nothing like watching Micah or Jeff slam their airplanes into the ground. That guy was actually looks like he likes his airplane. <laughs> and uh, I, I admire that. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. He actually likes it. He like wants to keep it in shape. But it, we aren't about passenger comfort here at National Stoll. We're about stopping it. Stopping, stopping it, it fast. Husky now. 1-1 one, one Hotel, if I recall correctly. Let's see who that one's flown by. I love the classic in number on top of the wing of that 170. One Hotel Yankee, my apologies. Getting stopped in sub 175. Quite impressive for a Husky. That's Brad Crawford from Hot Springs, Arkansas. I'll be there next month. I'm looking forward to my first visit to Hot Springs in many, many years. Now we have a Highlander. Very stabilized approach. He's got that left wing low, just fighting the crosswind, tracking the center line of the runway as best he can. Winds are a bit gusty, working to the advantage of some pilots and the disadvantage of others, for sure. Modulating the throttle, getting the nose very high across the line and stopping really short. If he stopped, that would have been a 50, 55 foot landing. So we, we, you mentioned the gusts and that it actually has picked up even in the last 20 minutes. We've gone from eight knots to 11 to 16 knots, still from 300 degrees. So picking up, winds are picking up. Picking up and that will work for Hal's favor. He loves to play in the wind. Most famous man on the internet that's not on the internet, Hal Stockman from Nevada. Flying this crazy modified Rans S7. He is not across the line. It's going to be a scratch, but a good short landing. And as always, his motor shut off. <laughs> I mean, if you want to stop the thrust, it does the job. Hearing from other comp competitors in our WhatsApp chat, it looks like Joel Dobson has made the trek from Chattanooga, braved the weather, and is getting ready to practice as well. 
Excited to see Joel flying a beautiful 172 tail dragger. And when I say beautiful, I mean that one is that is just a stunning airplane, perfectly outfitted. Looks like Matt Vastine is in that Highlander. Again, rolled the stop so it will not be an official score even for a practice. One of the things I encourage pilots on consistently is make sure that you actually stop because in the competition, it matters. So wet that as Don was trying to just get the tail up for his takeoff run, he was sliding forward through that the mud. That was a sub 150, sub 150 foot takeoff for Don Mickey in a giant airplane that you can load up with your family and all your gear. Totally bonkers. Gee, many Christmas. This is the kind of thing that I love about National Stole. You start to see different types of airplanes. They can do all sorts of things, and their performance numbers are just plain shocking. 170B on the roll. And away he goes. Again, sub 150 feet. Best takeoff I've seen from him yet today. That's Eric Bentley in the 170 Bravo from Smithville. Eric's one of our rookies. We share the same name, so I had to get to know him a little bit. He is fired up and flying very well. On the roll. Matt Festine now taking the line in the Just Aircraft. It's a 2023, this is a brand new airplane. Current best score, 653. Again, I wish that he would have stopped. That was a really impressive takeoff and landing last round. Might be one to watch tomorrow as he gets it dialed in. You never know. Someone who's kind of newer to the circuit. Absolutely. Got to keep an eye on these guys who are taking off in sub 100 feet. So, Eric, as we watch, you know, we've sat here today and we've watched the weather conditions change. Tomorrow it's supposed to have a little bit heavier wind. Hopefully it'll be a little bit drier. Here's Hal now. Off, off the ground. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> sub 50, right? Definitely sub 50. Looks to be about 45, 46 feet. Just in that kind of area that he needs to be within striking distance of the other unlimited competitors. Not on the board yet for the practice session. Again, to put it in perspective, Dan Reynolds in that Chinook in practice, best combined score of 63 feet. Joel Milloway right behind him in that S7 with a combined score of 138 feet. That's insane. 162 for Brian Shirley and Jared Gerritsen in fourth with 193. Again, if this were if this were the real deal. Here's Don Mickey now over the line. No, it's not, not. over the line. Not over the line. You know, again, we talked about those rule changes, and each of these guys in their briefing has been reminded that they have to go past the line. It's a big learning curve. You know, we've been flying over and over again, doing the same thing. <sighs> to retrain the brain is a powerful thing. And we're talking about how, how much further they have to fly, like uh, 30 foot? inches. 30 inches? That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about 30 inches. Eric in the 170. Pulling the power early. That gear's taking none of it. It'll be a really interesting conversation to have with him tonight. Some of the other 170 drivers trying to help him understand the technique that's required to allow that suspension to take more of the impact, removing some of that energy and allowing the aircraft to stop shorter. Beautiful Husky. I like, I like this Husky. I feel like you don't see this paint job very often on a Husky. I like the way that it, uh, I like the way it looks. That's just me over here. Just uh, liking airplanes. Hey, I think that's why we're all here. Loving airplanes is what we do and learning how to better our skills is what it's all about. It is good. No, it's not. Oh. Lexi, I disagree from way over here, all right? With, with heavy parallax and, uh, <laughs> and from being a, a mile away, uh, we disagree. It's all right. We can go back to the tape on that one. I trust Lexi. She's done this so well for so long now. She's got it dialed in. 
And I see David Curley back across the runway prepping for his next round of practice. Or he could just be flying to the restaurant. That's very possible, too. All of us flying out to DI's tonight, a local favorite. DI's is a great restaurant with a fantastic runway right outside. So one of my favorite moments in National Stoll for me over the years was the first time I flew into DI's with Colin Kosovinski and then coming back and playing through the fields with all these incredible pilots and just seeing the joy that airplanes can bring. And as a lifelong flyer, that moment still sticks out as one of the best moments of aviating I've ever experienced. Great landing here for race number 117. I don't think I've ever made it to DIs either. I've never, I've never held a baby alligator at Swamp Stole. Oh man. I missed steaks last night. You're no, just doing like I've wrong. Ever, I, 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 yeah, I'm failing. You're failing. failing. Swamp Stole, that's me. All right, we're going to find you a ride to DIs. Maybe we can get Hal to take you. <laughs> Here's Hal now doing, I, I joke about it, but another helicopter impression. Ooh, it's another scratch. Another scratch. Disappointing for Hal. You know, he's really, his style of flying is so different from so many. He doesn't generally ride that power curve. He just keeps a nice, predictable approach. It's planned, it's direct. And I bet if we were to look at the tape on that, he's probably within inches of it not being a scratch. I'll be looking forward to seeing the tape on that. Don Mickey back to the line. Oh. I don't know how he did it, but that Highlander just ran over a cone right between his gear. I didn't hear a prop strike it, so we're, <laughs> I guess we're good. Maybe that's just a little bit of a testament to the uh, the gear travel of the Highlander design right there. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Quite impressive indeed. Shout out to my wife and kids back in Austin, Texas. Hey, guys. Thanks for letting me do this. They're watching the stream right now. Always great to have family be a part of this with me. I wish you guys were here. Don Mickey, waiting for the release. This will be their third and final round of practice for the day. Hear that beautiful 0470 rumble, diving toward the ground. Getting that tail up nice and high. A little and early, like bringing the, the flaps in earlier than I've ever seen him do before. Kind of an interesting play. Eric Bentley at the line now in that silver and blue Cessna 170 Bravo. Purchased the aircraft in July of 2021. Finished the conversion into the Super, the 170 Super conversion in February of 2023. He's got over 241 hours in the plane. Total of 525 hours of total flight time. Now that's pretty great that he's competing on this level already with relatively, I mean, 525 is a lot of hours, but it's relatively less compared to, I think earlier today we had some about 30,000 hours of tailwheel time, a, a crop duster. Pretty incredible to have that much, that much experience in any lifetime, much less, you know, coming in here and still getting to compete with 30,000 hours of time under your belt. I'm gonna do some basic math here for a second. That's uh, almost three and a half years in the air, by the way. Three and a half years. That's incredible. <laughs> and if you just do it 12 hours a day, that's seven years in the air. Insanity. Hal Stockman, a legend in all of our minds, best, lining up. Best run so far for Hal Stockman, 122 feet. 122, sitting firmly in second place ahead of Joel Milleway. Goes for the early rotations, off before the 50 once again.
You know, that airplane has a most incredibly Franken Frankenstein engine you can imagine. The last time I talked to him, it had 915 pistons, a 912 case. <laughs> it's just absolutely incredible what that man can do with a Rotax motor. And then have the confidence in it to fly it across the country. Don Mickey holding it off. Ooh, it's good. Good. Now he's got to get it stopped. Look at it. He's just locked up, sliding through the mud. Or should I say, sliding through the swamp. That does seem accurate. Great spacing from our competitors today. Our Airboss team doing an incredible job as always. I heard that between them they have over 70 years of Oshkosh Tower experience with the Airbosses we have here today. Bringing in the 170. Good over the line. Getting that yoke back. Maybe a little bit more. If I'm going to armchair quarterback, armchair pilot back. <laughs> Could have get it, got that tail down a little more aggressively. Well, there certainly is a little more travel in the elevator. It does feel a little uncomfortable, though, to be pulling. Because, you know, most of those yokes, as they pull, they have that little switch little bit right. to them, you know, right. just feels a little off, but I definitely could agree with that assessment. Now look at what the Husky's doing now. Really, really got it slowed down. He does. And not only that, we can look at the winds out here. It's looking more and more consistent, a little bit more down the runway. Not dancing on the pedals as much. Just letting the airplane do its thing. Get it across the line. It's across it's the good. line. A little bit of bounce, but nothing too bad. Impressive numbers for a Husky again. Sub 150. You know, it's funny. I we I don't. Viewers at home have this kind of swamp stole practice lineup where they can see where all the scores are ending up, and I I don't know if we've ever displayed the practice numbers visually like that before in national stole history, but it's interesting to see how. The top people in classes are actually closer than you would think, right? We've got Brian Shirley in the MOAC hanging out with Joel Milloway in a sport class S7, hanging out with Hal Stockman in an unlimited class S7. Pretty impressive indeed. It's neat to see that these things are, you know, we do our very best using the data of the years of events that we've had to categorize where these airplanes should play. and. Sometimes you get something like a Brian Shirley who just blows us all away and throws a 162 with a legend Moak. It's absolutely incredible numbers. Which, just to be fair, compared to an S7, like it's a lot more airplane. A lot more airplane. Speaking of S7, Hal Stockman coming in. He's got to manage a little bit of that wind there, a little bit of a sink that he's counteracting, but he's balancing it out. Holding it off. Good over the line. Look at how short he got that stopped. Absolutely beautiful, as always, from Hal Stockman. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're here with us in Jennings, Louisiana, or if you are not here with us and you're online, in person, come check out the merch booth. They'll be there till 4.30. Lots of new merch dropping for the 2024 season of National Stole. And if you're online, join us at nationalstole.com to pick up your own merch. We'll mail it off to you. New hats like the one I'm wearing right here. Love it. New shirts. I've got one. I was I was waiting. To, I was literally waiting for this moment. But, hey, there's, there's pretty special. I, I'm a big fan of these hats, and uh, they're available right now on our website and at at the merch booth. Make sure you pick yours up so you can show support for the sports you're learning to love so much. We'd love to have you. What's great about these that I'm very excited about is they're, they look waterproof, yeah? They are. It's really great. Yeah, I, I wore it all day today and all day yesterday in the rain. <laughs> nice. There we go. Should I put mine on? I'll put, my, I'll put mine on. Go for it, my friend. Getting ready now for another round of practice. We've got some great pilots lined up. We have that Highlander. Right behind him, we have Hal. And it looks like Dave Curley. Who else will join, oh, perhaps? That, sorry, it, never mind the flying. That hat looks pretty good on me. It's a pretty good-looking hat. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. It stays. <laughs> Joel 
Milloway joining as well. Two S7s battling it out against two Highlanders. Now, Pat McIntyre was standing about 20 feet away when Joel was practicing earlier. And I was like, uh, what do you think, Pat? And he said, oh, it's short. He's doing short stuff. <laughs> he is doing short stuff. And I talked to Joel after the briefing. I mentioned that uh, Pat had upgraded his engine to the 914. And Joel said, well, I haven't really done any upgrades this year. I, I'll, maybe I'll get on that. I don't know that he needs to. With the scores he's throwing down are that exceptional. It's really an impressive display of piloting. And I was over there across the runway doing some line judging, watching how these pilots set up for their takeoffs. Joel using the entire width of the runway. Dan basically aiming across the runway at us, making adjustments <laughs> with the rudder as he leaves the ground to get back on track down runway heading. Really impressive display, exactly what we want to see. People pushing these airplanes and themselves as far as they possibly can. So while we wait for this next round of practice to kick off, I want to go through and just thank someone for keeping me comfortable and you comfortable. USATrailersDirect.com. Check out this trailer we're in. I was actually seeing the first swamp stole. I was under a, uh, under a tent. Yeah, in, we've done it from heat. RVs. We've done it from yeah. tents. We, you name it, we've now, done it. So now we're here. But also uh, the entire broadcast team, the whole team of people that do all the camera angles, all the scoring and everything, they're also in this same trailer just on the other side of a wall right there. I don't know if we can cut to them as well, uh, but they're there as well. So all, the, all of these folks staying comfortable and, and being able to do. We just saw that. We just saw the bone take off, which is exciting. We'll talk about that in a moment. I think we'll see more from him. That's our ex exhibition class uh, file. Ah, okay. So we've got a great view. I, I couldn't believe his scores. Yesterday he was practicing, and I was seeing a giant 5,000-pound airplane taking off in sub-500 feet and then landing in sub-500 feet. Really incredible performer. He says that he can load up six people and all the camping gear they need in that airplane, and I believe it. I, I t couldn't be a nicer guy. Todd is great and really has done an exceptional job of both the flying skill and just being a decent human being. I really like him. Great to have him here from Sulphur Springs, Texas. I believe that's where he is. I know he's oh, in Texas there, somewhere. Yeah. I see. There he goes. And uh, that plane's called Bertha, yeah? They named it Bertha. Got to love a name like that. Making that left turn back down here to base leg for a nice little presentation view of what this airplane can do. Little inspection pass. Big, big airplane. He's doing an, doing approach. an approach. Nice approach, there's landing lights on. What a beautiful airplane. I just can't help but smile thinking about how cool it is that we live in a world where we get to do this, we get to experience so much cool aviation. Oh my God. Nice and smooth. Powered up and away he goes. That is a big airplane. That is a big airplane. We're not using the grass runway for him today because it's just too wet. And with 5,000 pounds, you can only imagine the amount of dirt that would be flying everywhere. But a big thanks to Todd for sharing that airplane with us. Super cool. It also is pretty fast. It is. He says he cruises about 150 knots, burning 36 gallons an hour, or 32 gallons an hour, something like that. This is the oldest airworthy twin bonanza. Wow. Very, very cool. It says here, uh, <laughs> Todd, Todd, he made this note, uh, invested significant personal resources. It's about half the value of a house. <laughs> That's, that sounds like most of my airplanes. They may not have that value, but I have invested significant personal resources. <laughs> I guess the question is, which, where in the country is that house? That is a solid question to ask, as real estate values certainly fluctuate. A little more speed on that one. Woo. That is a spicy approach.
neat to see that an airplane with that much capability can get off the ground in less than 500 feet and get back down on it in the same distance. While certainly not a traditional backcountry airplane, this is a powered by two O435s. And something I found very interesting during his practices yesterday, he said that he doesn't cycle the gear during stole competitions because the gear and the flaps utilize the same motor, which is something I had no idea about. So very interesting to understand that utilizing the same motor, he couldn't retract the flaps and the gear at the same time. So Eric, you know, one of the things we're talking about right now is what we're doing partially is, is a safety test for tomorrow. Right? So we know we can't touch the wheels down on the turf because uh, it's so wet, but we also need to be make, make sure that tomorrow uh, when things are a little bit drier, Todd can get in and out of this runway. So part, that's what these approaches are for right now is to test, make sure that we've got a safe margin for tomorrow during competition once, once the turf uh, dries out. All about the safety. Do our very best here to ensure that each of these pilots is making the right call for themselves and for the crowd. This is actually one of my favorite airports because we're able to have such a large safety area between these pilots competing and the crowd itself. There's a nice viewing area. Folks sitting over there underneath the National Stole tent. The smart ones who are avoiding the shade, I see you, well done. And by avoiding the shade, I mean avoiding the sun. I do have words that sometimes work correctly, but not usually. Okay, looks like we're back underway for normal practice here. At Swamp Stole 2024, again, if you're watching us at home, we really appreciate it. If you're watching it here in person, we really appreciate it. Hope you got your mud boots on, because it is Swampy. It's it been is. it's been a little wet. We've got a lake. I, I've dubbed it Lake Jennings, uh, right in front of us, and it's it that fits. It's, it's receding. It looks like it's going down a little bit as the the ground has a little more room in it, and uh, we've got our good friend, uh, Mr. Curly, Dave Curly, at the line, putting that tail real high up, and he's off already. Sub 100 feet for Dave Curly. He'll love that one. He's my neighbor over in Spicewood, Texas. Great guy, super analytical. The way he thinks about things is a really, really a joy to be with. And that's, you can say that for almost anybody here. There's so many great people who are fun to hang out with. It makes National Stole just feel like a family reunion every single time. Hal Stockman ready to give it another go for practice. In lawnmower. Last three times around for the practice session of Swamp Stole 2024, presented by National Stole. Hal Stockman ripping her off the ground around 50 feet. Joel Milloway and Tiger Shark, S7 right after S7. This uh, is a great battle between two very similar airplanes and two very similar airplanes. Eric, I don't know, could you, could you figure out why they call it tiger shark though like i i haven't figured that out yet something gave it away but what just blew my mind is he just beat hal stockman's takeoff let's see that in the books let's see where the where we end up with that that is exceptional performance from a much less modified aircraft you are correct 39 feet for Milloway, 48 feet for stockman and dan reynolds with the best takeoff of the day at 38 feet just one foot shorter than Joel Milloway. We may see Joel have to make a little move to the unlimited class. Talk to us a little bit about unlimited class, Eric. So like unlimited class one, uh, that was the first place to lead the charge on helmets, shoulder harnesses, things like that, because we're talking about such a higher performance potentially in the aircraft. But two, there's, there's some additional uh, things at stake for the pilots. Certainly. At most of our events, the unlimited class has money on the line. They put up and at least $500 a piece, and the winner takes all. So super cool to, uh, to see guys actually fighting it out for hard earned dollars, cold hard cash. And uh, man, do they ever fight all out. Watching Steve Henry and Hal and Dan battle it out for the last year. Even the events where the top guys haven't been able to make it, seeing local performances that have been really exceptional playing in that Whoa. same category. Ooh. Saved it with the balloon, but actually stopped still pretty short for, for Dave Curley there. Right around 160 feet for Dave Curley.
Highlander versus Highlander now. Matt Vastine Brand coming in new. next. Brand new Highlander. All the flashy lights. So Matt's got a little bit of work to do in terms of dialing things in. It looks like he's doing it pretty well right now, honestly. Uh, coming in real, real slow. Hanging it out a little bit. Good over the line and short, short, short. There we go. 50 feet. Holy cow. We've got a contender. Now the S7s. First, Hal Stockman. Uh, I just, well, Hal Stockman's coming in. I just want to point out Matt Vastine just jumped from like 30th place to third place. <laughs> that is a dramatic improvement for practice for Matt Vastine. Here's Hal now. Right over the line. Good over the line. Getting it stopped. His prop's still turning. I don't even recognize him. I feel like we're seeing some gauntlets being dropped for tomorrow right now. 100%. Now with the takeoff that we saw from Joel, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be incredible to see what happens here. Potential to have a complete upset and take away Dan Reynolds' spot if just the right gust of wind and just the right bit of pilotage happens. He looks like he's basically hovering here. Ground speed of about 20 miles an hour at most. Ooh, dropping a wing. Whoa, okay. Going around for safety. Going around for safety. Making the right call there. You see he dropped the wing. Realized he couldn't recover at that altitude. The right move was to add power and go around. Certainly the safe call there from Joel Milloway. We appreciate it. It's one of the things that we encourage all of our competitors to do is to be aware of not just their safety, but the safety of the line judges and the crowd. Now, typically in this situation and competition, what will happen is that's a little bit of a, a, a wake-up call, for lack of a better term, for the pilot, and we won't see as short of a landing after the go-around because they've got a new, an unusual set of circumstances, right? I they have additional wisdom. They have additional yeah, there wisdom. There we go. Uh, so he's coming in hot now, bring it around base to final. But I'm curious if he'll have a high performance landing now or if he's going to play it a little more conservatively, especially since it's practice. You know, it really depends. He, he's a quite the contender. He flew 22 hours to get here, and he obviously is in it to win it as much as he possibly can. I don't think that he has a whole lot of nerves when it comes to that sort of thing. It's just part of flying the airplane. You know, obviously these are the most crucial moments of pilotage. You know, these takeoffs and landings, it is good. Big thumbs up from Lexi. Got to get it stopped, Joel. Oh, he's under power again. He, he doesn't want us to know what it would be. He's keeping that safe for hey, tomorrow. I, I can respect that maneuver. And also, you know, there's there's a bit of honor, right? There's a there's a moment of, is, there, is it honorable to take another landing after a go around? And that's a question for every pilot. I think it's totally fine. Um, but there have also been some controversies over the years where pilots say, well, you know, you went around because you were going to scratch, right. right? I don't think that was the situation at all there. I think you made the absolute right safety decision. But it is something that does become a conversation. It, it's interesting because I think the, it, that one was a clear decision. Certainly. That one was a clear. I think there are some for view, longtime viewers of National Stole may remember certain instances during competition where it wasn't as clear like oh did you just go around because you knew you were coming up short and uh obviously we'd want to err on the side of safety every time but sometimes it could be a little questionable sometimes indeed and that's part of that's part of why the, the racing is racing right you're gonna have people who may disagree and that's okay Looking across the airport now, seeing the Kizik trailer, one of our sponsors for this event. They make incredible coolers of all shapes and sizes. Super grateful for their support. Looking forward to seeing their booth set up this weekend here at Swampstole. 
I guess they finally decided that it, the, the ground was dry enough to drive across because <laughs> it has been a lake in the parking area. Matt Vastin, one to watch now for tomorrow, kind of coming out of nowhere. Best run so far, 131. That's down from a best run of 585. Hal Stockman with his last round, taking second place with a total score of 112. Dan Reynolds still the man to beat with a 63 foot combined score. There's the release. Tails coming off the ground, diving it toward the ground, pulling back, dropping the flaps okay. in, and away he goes. Sub 50 feet again for Hal. Previous takeoff, that 40, 44 feet for Hal Stockman there. Joel Milway in the Tiger Shark, number four. Going to show us his stripes. Oh, my Merry God. Christmas. I just can't believe. That airplane must be so light because he's touting probably 30 less horsepower, 40 less horsepower than Hal. I, 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 it's incredible. He could be helium in the tires. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him at this point. I see Jill Dobson making his way to the fuel farm. I wonder if we get the opportunity to see Joel in that beautiful 172 joining us here on the competition field. Joel Milloway with a 38-foot takeoff that matching the best takeoff of Dan Reynolds. <laughs> I wonder what Dan thinks about that. I mean, when you have somebody who's in a sport-class airplane performing at that high of a level, it just makes you go, huh. I'm wondering, Eric, do you think that there's a little bit of coaching happening right now between uh, Dave Curley and Matt Vastine? Because we saw such a dramatic change with Matt's scores. It's certainly possible. We, we don't have a rule against that in National Souls rulebook at this point. We, we actually encourage pilots to help each other and to learn how to better their scores. Certainly possible that that's what's happening. Matt Vastine currently in third place for the day. Combined score of 131. Now on short final. Again, we see him kind of bobbling and battling these wins. David Curley passing Matt Vastine. Keeping it off the line. All Good. the energy into the gear. Sliding to a stop. Happy with that one, I think. By the way, uh, Russ from Airplanes and Coffee and I came up with the term, uh, instead of a rollout today, they're slide outs. Slide outs. Eh, you know, it's, it works in baseball. It works in national stole. At least it's swamp stole. Hal Stockman, short, short final barely moving. Once again, we just see the beauty of these lightweight aircraft using the wind to their advantage. Currently about 12 to 16 knots of wind. We're expecting slightly more tomorrow. He is across the line and that, that is, is incredibly short. short. There was uh, a joke your friend Dozen just made on his uh, Instagram a little while that just occurred to me. That idea of like, oh, if you're trying to figure out the approach you need a little bit more time just pause the simulation There's definitely seeing some of that today with the slow flight it does seem that way they really are just getting it down to as slow as it can go Joel Milloway now very stable very controlled you know we've seen some knockdown fights in this series ooh it looks like little it's bad little short for Joel Milloway on that one which the landing distance, however, looked almost exactly the same as what we saw from Hal Stockman. Hal Stockman now uh, 87 feet combined. 87, taking second place. And it is anyone's game 
I mean, these are pl half of these planes aren't even competing against each other tomorrow. That's what's amazing to me is we're seeing planes from different classes. Obviously, Dan and Hal are going to be f uh, duking it out, uh, but Joel, Matt. Brian at Shirley, who was flying the Moak earlier. I mean, these are scores that are super tight across aircraft types that are vastly different. They are indeed. And a total score for Dan Riddles is 63. Hal Stockman, an 87. 24 feet separate first and second place for this practice. Matt Vastine on the line, Dave Curley off into the wild blue yonder. Matt Vastine currently in third place with a 131. David Curley, 102 feet behind him. Another fantastic takeoff from Matt. Here's Hal. Powering up, tails rising. And just floating into the air. Gee, many Christmas. I love watching these S7s duke it out here. Very similar flying styles, very similar aircraft. I mean, it's the same airframe. <laughs> you know? Joel Millowave revving it up. And away he goes. <laughs> that, is, that is bonkers. I think he just bested Hal's takeoff there. We'll have to see. 47 feet for Hal Stockman. And Joel Millaway, 39. <laughs> <laughs> So, Joel, I mean, think about that. Joel, we've said it before, but just to reiterate, he's putting up Dan Reynolds' numbers today. You know, Chinook, Valdez, special numbers. Airplanes that are custom built for this. Airplanes that don't fly all the way across the country for 22 hours. Joel may end up being the man to beat here, honestly. Just looking at this performance, if he can keep it up. David Curley, low into the left. He needs to get the power in. He's got the power. Oh, he's not able to make it across the line. Scratch for Curly. Matt now. Mr. Bastine. What? I got to talk to him tonight. What? What happened? Changed. Let's look at the numbers together. Run one, 653 feet. Run two, 585 feet. Run three, 600 feet. Run four, 131 feet. That's a lot less feet, Eric. Run five, 159 feet. Was I secretly flying it for the first three runs? <laughs> no, like, you were here with me, weren't you? That <laughs> was unbelievable. The fact that he's had that much improvement, I mean, that, that does not make logical sense, and I'm here for it. I mean, I almost wonder if it's just a difference between stopping aggressively and not. Maybe Steve Henry's in there. It's good. Oh, look how short that's going to be. All the energy once again right into the gear, making the difference big time for Matt Vastine. Neither. <laughs> uh, the, the, I can just see it right now. Everyone who's watching is uh, ordering their kits from, from Rands and Just. <laughs> Aircraft. I will say, from, from my knowledge, that's already happened, and the wait time is pretty exceptional right now. For both manufacturers, I think. Indeed. Many of our pilots I can see in the background taxiing out, taking runway 3-1, preparing for that flight to DIs. Hal's holding it off right on the line. Marked good.
And Joel Milloway, not to be outdone. In the final landing of our practice. A little bit of a bounce there. Stopping short. Oh, we it didn't did, stop. Didn't stop, though. It's practice. It doesn't really matter. But I was just really curious. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. That was really exceptional flying from all of our pilots today. Love to see how more and more pilots are coming together for these National Stole events. With 54 pilots registered here at Swamp Stole 2024. We'll be live tomorrow at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. tomorrow. Looking forward to it, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're here with us in person, make sure you say hi to the pilots. They're all friendly. They don't bite. Well, some of them do, but that's all right. We look forward to seeing each of you tomorrow. Thank you so much for having me on, Ryan. It's been yeah. a blast. Again, I'm Ryan Dombrowski. This is Eric Farewell. It's been National Stole at Swamp Stole 2024. Tune in tomorrow for all the exciting, hopefully a little drier action. Indeed. Looking forward to it. He's ramping up. He's got the tail up. That's a little nice flare for a rookie. Here we go. Popping the flare. There he goes at about 100 and I'm calling that 123. We'll see the score on the screen here and relay it to you in the audience momentarily. Nope. Here's Kelly Qualls now on short final. Flaps. Looking good. Dropped. Looking good. Keep it steady. You notice there's not a lot of buffeting. I think we've got a good stable headwind today, and that is going to now drop those flaps, Kelly. Drop them. Dump him, dump him, dump the flaps. He's still got the flaps Look, in. I want to point out there, did you see that he basically slid on locked up tires? For That's right. With a professional commercial pilot. Here goes Brandon Corn. Oh, what? dragging the tail. What is going on? <laughs> that no. was a nice one. No, it's where all our broadcast communication stuff happens. They're the official trailer sponsor of National Stole. Here they comes. provided that for us. Here's Brandon. Brandon, nice one. Digging he, the tail in a little bit. Look, he's picked up mud. He's got mud packed in his tail hook. Nice. <laughs> nice. Here Here's he Jeff Pohl again. Up. Tail up, tail down. Nice. These are incredible performance today. That yes. low density altitude. The Bring it in. Got those flaps dropped. Love seeing those bush wheels. A little bit of a little bit of a bubble up. Easing it off. Right on the line. Thumbs up. Get it short. Get it stopped. Sub 75 That's feet. That's what I'm talking about. I right want to talk there. about something for a second. That's what I'm talking about. We're starting to get. There he goes with the tail up. Here's Brian tail down. Still not breaking that 50 foot barrier that we had from. Here comes Brian Steck. Got it touched down real nice. A little bit of brake fade. When we measure, we measure from the furthest away main. Because there's some other factor that it affected. Didn't, didn't harm him at all there. That's right, oh. that's right. So wow. you, you notice uh, Rick, Rick's gear is sitting right in front of that belly pod, and that belly pod might be changing the way the air goes around that gear. And see which way the air is actually going. Here's Rick Boardman now coming in. Watch him plunk it. Oh, right on the line. Very Thumbs good. Lexi up from says the line good. Judge. Lexi says good. Look at that. Right. He's up. He can winding up that turbo. Off he now, goes. man. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the event that's like a drag race. 77. Total 77. Here's Steve Henry now hanging it on the prop. Got that Putting that tail up. down. Right Holy. on the line. Oh! oh, you gotta be kidding me. That was you just have bonkers. You gotta be kidding me. What's up, Av Geeks and Stole Freaks? Welcome to Lone Star Stole here in beautiful Sulphur Springs, Texas.
what you've been waiting for. That's right, the beast mode coax. Cow and Geneva. Uh, legendary. 